Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Oh Appreciate man. You, man. Oh man. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah. Well, you I, know? Knew, I knew it was going to be something you said. I need to read the book before we sit down. So I, I'm expecting you to have an in detail yeah. question for me. So like, let's do you it. You know, but first I want to thank the Cypher Radio for having us. You know, Appreciate I want to it, man. give a big thanks out to Mike. You know, I want to thank you to um, Live Hip Hop Daily in Atlanta, you know, for holding us down and keeping us covered. I want to thank The Long Way. I want to thank ASAP Media, you know, so those are the folks that made sure we're here today to, to take on, you know, this discussion. Appreciate you, you know, as well. Appreciate you, know, you as well. No well. You know, you've been busy here. lately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if you haven't Bless read it. the book, I, I, it's a great read. It's thank a really you. I appreciate great, you know, that, man. It's a great read. So, um, you know, what, what made you write a book? To be honest, man, just, you know, fed time, just sitting up in the joint, man. It was like, you know, this time being in jail was different for me. You know what I'm saying? That's the first time I went to jail in my 40s. So it was like, usually I get to the joint and be with the bullshit, excuse me, be with the same, you know, be with the everything. So it was like, this time it was like, I'm around young dudes, 30, 35. So it's like, okay, they, that's cool, but I, I got to focus on something else because the conversation and all that was just different for me, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I really didn't really, you know, although I said what's up and we, 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 we kicked it and was humble, my mind state was like this just, you know, this, 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 this age group just ain't really me, you know what I'm saying? So I had to find something else to focus aside on other than just working out and, you know what I'm saying? So there it was, it was like, I'm all right. That's another chapter to my life. I always wanted to write, so I just took the time to say I'm going to get it in now. I see your, your work, like your music, you know, is very, like, when you hear it, you know, you paint a picture. Mm -hmm. And you, you see that in your writing. You know, I thought it was a very good read. You know, as I read the book, I was, you know, it captured me. You captured the moments every time. Yeah. You know, so I, I could see that, you know, that, that change from going as an artist and reflecting in your work as an artist as now with a pen and a paper and telling a story. Child. Well, you know, I read books in the joints. You know what I'm saying? I read some books before, and it was like, I didn't want to write in the basic format that, you know what I'm saying? Even when I went to the editor, he wanted to take out certain words and sort of make it proper. And I was like, nah, that's not how, you know what I'm saying? He, he, he advised me on some things, and I was like, I, I want it raw like that. I want it cut like that. I want it to say the way I'm saying it as opposed to you going with direct, correct spelling. I, I You know what I'm saying? The people that know, that can relate to it is going to know exactly what I mean by me using the certain slang that I use. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I had to, I wanted it to feel authentic, feel, feel like me. You know what I'm saying? Even when I write my music, I may say something that sounds, it may say, it may, it means what it means, but it may sound different. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to apply that in the book. Mm -hmm. So, um, with that being said, like when I usually, um, like it captured me, but it, what was different about this is I knew a lot of the characters in yeah, the story. Yeah, yeah. So with that being like, like, so I, it was, it was different, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I read it like, wow, it's deep, but it was even deeper because, you know, these are people's, you know, I actually knew. Yeah, in yeah. Some stand, Boston, in some you know what I'm you saying? You know, Boston small. Exactly. You know, um, have, have you got any feedback from that? Any thoughts? Uh, you know, to be honest, I've had some people, now I'm not going to say some people, I've had some females, you know what I'm saying, that, that at the, at the truly beginning, before they even read the book, you know, was like, oh, don't use my name, don't use my name, you know, and it was like, yo, man, you, you know, you was a part of my life at this time, well, can't you switch it up? Nah, I'm not switching it up, we're going to come official, there should be no shame in the game, you know, and I don't think that, it wasn't like I wrote it to sort of down anybody, you know, because anybody that was in the book being a female and the dudes, the ones that are still alive, it's like you'll see the growth from where we was at to where they at now. Everybody that I speak about down to dudes to females are doing very well for themselves, you know what I'm saying? And and, and just, you know, jobs now who probably didn't have jobs and, and, and you know, and have grown a lot. So it's just, it was just a flashback to say this is where I was at. So instead of looking at it as, as it as... I'm down to you. Just take a step out of the situation and give you a chance to look at your growth. Mm -hmm. Were mm -hmm. there any names that you changed in the book? Yeah, one or two. One or two. I, I will say that I did. And you know, I got a little flack off that from other females that was in a part of the situation. They're like, well, why are you changing my name? And didn't change hers. You know what I'm saying? And I felt as though there were some females in the book who, and that's why I say it was no disrespect intended, but there were some females who played 
more of a villainish role if I was to actually, you know what I'm saying? Not to put anything that I didn't take responsible for any of the actions that went on, but it was like, okay, I don't need to say this because those who know will know, but I just, you know, this is something that will probably be embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? I can't leave it out. I can't leave it out because it's a part of the story and it's, and, 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 it's it's a strong part of the story. But what I will do for you on a couple people, I said, okay, I will change the name here because this is some deep, deep content. You know what I'm saying? So just out of respect, I change those things. There's people who do know, but then for those who don't, I will change your name. Okay? Mm-hmm. So I got flack from that from some females. All right. And out of curiosity, how much did you leave out? I mean... With a book like that, man, being so real, it's like you have to be cautious of statute of limitations and stuff. So I had to make sure that everything that I said that I couldn't actually go to prison for. You see what I'm saying? So with that being said, of course, there was there was some things left to imagination and some things left to Roma. But, you know, I came as close as to being all the way fulfilling that I could be, you know, mm-hmm. without incriminating myself or anybody else that was in the book. So um, we're gonna jump into the book. You know yeah, what I mean? We're gonna jump right into the book. Um, like uh, like you started out like really jumping off the porch, eighth grade. From mm-hmm. what I understand, you know, you get stabbed. Mm-hmm. You know, at that moment, you know, what was you know what was that your changing point from? That was my this way? yeah, exactly. Because before I got stabbed, man, I was like. You know, I'm really not from, like, if you read the book, I'm not from the Bricks. Mm-hmm. I was Fidel's friend who is from the Bricks. Me and him became best friends. I, I, Fidel. I live I mean, real good dude. further I down the dude. street. So he basically was the one who brought me and Gerard up to the Bricks. You see okay. what I'm saying? So my mentality was like, I'm like middle class, mom's working, pops in the house until he left. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I really wasn't there like that. You know what I'm saying? So... Once I got stabbed, it was like, for me, it was like, yeah, trying to mentally just put me on go, like, okay, you know what I'm saying? Anything can happen now, so I got to be willing to make anything happen. That's that's interesting that you talk about your pops, because we're going to talk about him. Yeah, well, no I, doubt. That, like, the way that that transpired and, and the way the book ends and the way, you know, because he kind of comes into your life at a certain point in time. Yeah, that, yeah. That real, that real Coincident- so, coincidentally, yeah. too. It yeah. was very coincidental. Yeah. It was almost meant like, like it was meant to happen. I would never that that type of situation, the way that happened, probably would never happen again. You know what I'm saying? The for not even for the fact of the celebrity situation that took place with it, just in the sense of how it happened. Like, All right. So let's let's reel back a little bit before we yeah. get that far. So we still at the beginning stage, and then now you you know from that stabbing was it what you felt like you had to get revenge? Was that what it was? What that was it? the first thing on my mind. You know. Plus, at that time, my cousins was on go though. You know, my cousin Tony was already. A, Already a serious street okay. dude, you know what and I'm saying? this is Tony Johnson. Who nah, is? Tony McKinney, Tony my cousin McKinney. Tony, okay. yeah. Okay. And he was already on go, so okay. just hearing him speak on it in a in an upsetting way and, mm-hmm. and, and his boy Tony McDonald and Derek, and you know, that was just like to me, like, okay, if they talk about something got to be done, then something got to be done, you know okay. what I'm saying? I can't sit here and be like, nah, why they, you know, I'm a younger cat listening to the OGs telling me, yeah, we it right. this. You know, this ain't like a half step. You got stabbed six times. They try to take you from here. Right. It's go time. So yes. my whole mind state from there was just like, this is just what it is. It's interesting because I want to say that's when um when I got introduced to you. I don't know if you remember this or not, but um the first time I met you was at um we were at Sh- uh, Shelbourne Center playing ball. Wow. With you and Vidal. Wow. I, I remember that's and, back. And I'll tell you the story of what happened. So. You know, we shooting hoop, and you and Vidal, y'all was y'all wasn't from Roxbury. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. Y'all, but y'all, I remember we used to go, so yeah. yeah. So I wasn't from Roxbury, so it was like, all right. So I was on the side, you know, shooting. I was by myself, you know. I was just over there, and y'all, you know, y'all came over, y'all shot around. Like, nah, cool. Y'all came and shot around or whatever. So afterwards, it was a kid at the time. I forget his name. I want to say his name was Paul. I forget his last name. He got stabbed. Y'all mm. never want to say back in them days. He, but um. This dude, he had, I had a Kangol, like a leather Kangol or something. And I went to grab my hat, my shit off the back, off the bleachers, and the Kangol was gone. 
But I immediately knew, because he was, you know, I, I ain't slow. I'm mm-hmm. like, yo, you was sitting by my shit, you know, so I run up on him, you know, what's up, da 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 Y'all, you and Videla still over to the side, she, you know, she went hoop. So, you know, he says something, something, up. and I'm like, nah, 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 uh-uh, I need my hat, woo, woo, woo. So you like, and you was, and you was, you was short, right? But you had this stance like a little, like a little man, like, you know what I mean? You looked up, yo, came over, you was like, yo. What's up with my man shit? You know what I mean? You said something. Wow. <laughs> I swear to God, you said something. You was like, yo, yo, yo. And I stood, I'm looking, I'm like, but they'll just stay in the back. You know, this is my first interaction with you. I yeah. never met you before, but this is our first interaction. I just sat in the back, kind of, but sat in the back, right? I kind of sat in between y'all. I'm looking at him, and he's just like, yo, that's, that. he's just looking like he knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? So, you know, because the dude was tall. You know, mm-hmm. he thought about, about a six foot, about five nine, five ten, six foot. You know, when we was little, we must have been about five feet. So he um he looks and you just look at him. You just give him this look. This look is like, yeah, get out of here. Boom. Boom. I could Im- I could imagine because you know I and me knowing me, if you know me, and for people that do truly know me, that's me. What I probably didn't like in that situation is that you was humble and he was pulling a move. And I've mm-hmm. been like that for years. Man, I can name several situations yeah. I just intervened because something just wasn't and, right. And from that moment, it was always like it was a mutual respect. I don't, no doubt. So you don't even remember. I don't even but remember. For me, it was like enough to say, all right, little dude, hold his own. You no, know what that, I mean? that was real. But, 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 but at that moment, we was kids. Now... We still a little bit later. Now I'm hearing your name. Mm-hmm. Now it's like Mike McNeil, this kid, you know, uh, Jimmy Corbett. Okay. You know, now you're getting in. Now I don't think you had even been stabbed yet. Oh, so okay. it was like, you know, I don't know what time, but it was right around that, you know, probably a little bit before Within that. Within those years. Yeah. So, you know, so now you're getting in and starting to gang bang. You're getting into the street life. But you also want to be a rapper. There it is. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. so where did your passion for this music come from? Man. Man, it's walking up the street with my man Buddha, man, was rapping off Girl Flex. I don't. I used to do plays. It was started me and Bum. I was in seventh and eighth grade. I did two plays. One called Just Desserts, and another mathematical play. I forgot it what it was. So seventh and eighth grade, I was the. I rapped about doing math. I rapped about reading with a dude named Wyatt. I don't know if you know him. He's a dancer back in the days. Choreograph choreographer Wyatt. And uh, him and Missy Lane, they just can't happen to come to the school and was like, who want to play this role? And, you know, it was simple back then. It was like one plus one equals two. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that sort of fueled it for me. It was like after after those two little plays, it was like, yo, that was dope. Okay. And I'm like, that was dope. So it really started off to be have something to be like, nobody else is doing this around here. Oh, I'm doing this, you know. So then at first I started writing like just girl music, you know, walking up the street, me and Buddha rapping about girls and just making stuff off the top of the head like any other kid. And I've been writing it down, just freestyling. Then I realized I had a knack for it. It was like, oh, man, you know, once you get a passion for anything, you gain a knack, you know what I'm saying? And I realized, like, oh, I kind of know how to put these bars together now. I know how to wear to make it rhyme now. So I could basically say anything because I know... Here goes this, and at the end of this, here goes this. This is dope, you know? Mm-hmm. When people are making it seem harder than it was, but it was really nothing, you know? Okay, so you're chasing this passion, and at the same young age, you and Benzino are now kind of bumping, you know, you, you, you come in contact. How, how do you all become friends? How do you, you meet Benzino? Well, it's weird because my cousin, like I told you, Tony and Little Tony, they were from Four Corners. Okay. They're, they're originally from Four Corners. They're, Zeno's from Four Corners, so... I would see Zeno in Four Corners before he came around my way. You see what I'm saying? He would just see me in Four Corners with Tony and Derek, like that's their little cousin. So we had a rapport, a what's up relationship just in Four Corners. I didn't know he had a relationship with Tony Johnson. I didn't know he, at this time, he really wasn't too connected to dudes around my way, but I didn't know him and Tony had a relationship, period. So then once I start seeing him, I, I looked up to him and, and, and RSO and their music. So all this time I was basically trying to get that conversation with him because of where they were at. But it wasn't until I seen him in my neighborhood and it was like, you know, it's different. It's like, you know, you see somebody here, you think you're venturing off into another neighborhood. Now it's like, oh, this is where you're from. You see what I'm saying? He would only see me with T and them, but he knew I wasn't from Four Corners. So without Tony and them, when he finally seen me, I happened to be from Morton Street. You see what I'm saying? So it was like a, 
Oh, okay. What's happening? We already. Were you playing your music for him? Would you let him hear your music? Not at that time. It, not at not as not as soon as we met. Within the next year, way before Wise got stuff, man, mm -hmm. I started telling him, "Yo, I could rap, man." You know what I'm saying? Do 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 do. Because I have deeper intel conversation with him around Morton than I did. In four corners. But you had started to form a rap group, though. Yes, we, yeah, exactly. Rap group. Now I'm in English. Me, okay. Modi, rest in peace, somebody named Rock. Okay. My boy Rock, who ended, ultimately ended up being in RSO. Exactly. So now with us being together, he's like, he, he, he sent me a few outlets. He sent me up to, to the radio station with Dave Mays prior to Dave having a source. So you, you kind of speak you kind of speak about that, because this is about the time when you go to prison for the yeah. first time. But even before prison, okay. like, I was going to radio stations. I was actually... Now we become like kind of cool. So he's telling me to come by the house. You know what I'm saying? So so I'm going by really actually rapping for him and stuff. Now so he so he's getting aware of my talent. And make no mistakes. To what I had developed to be, I wasn't at that time. So what he was hearing might wasn't even as interesting as him to him as it was in the later years. Okay. But he just was aware that I could okay. rap. You okay. Know? So, but now at this time, I believe he ends up signing one of your friends, but you end up going to prison. Right? Now, right. yes, right. yes. Right. Now he signs Rock. So, what did you go to prison for the first time? My first one was a pistol charge. Okay, yeah. So, now I go to jail for the pistol, and it's like, okay, now this is when the deal happens, probably like four to five months in the in, in, inside. And I had knew Ray before Rock, but see, Rock was well-developed by the time he had came in, even when we had the group FOA. It was like me, him, and Modi, Jermaine Spencer from Greenwood. Mm -hmm. and, and basically both of them at the time actually was was pretty much well more developed than me because Modi had like a sense of flow with him. Everybody had something that stood out. Rock had aggression, Mo had a flow, and I was still trying to find what I got and what is it. I just know how to put the words together. I had to know how to, it's like you could put the food in the oven, but you don't know how to season it right. Mm -hmm. I knew how to put it in, but I didn't know how to sprinkle what stood out about them in my music. So how, how was that? transition though now that you know you are you know they're making music but you 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 know you sitting behind the wall how old was you oh man i was like i was 18 years old man it was like like i said in the song and in the book i was happy for rock because that was my brother you know what mm -hmm. i'm saying i was he was not only just a brother, he was a younger dude who was a protector. No, I mean, when I say transition, just your life, you know, for your first time being in prison, how did you adapt, you know, for like, you know, being off the streets and now you're in prison I, at a young age? I can't lie, man. In those ever, in those times, man, it was like vacation. You know, man, that's stupid minded. It's like because the prison systems were so wild, it was just the streets behind the wall. You know what I'm saying? It was never no... It was different back then. It was like, okay, now I'm grouped up with a few other dudes. We're not thinking about home because we conducting this wild man. And it become, and it's sad to say because these are the things that these dudes go through now. But it was, it was sad to be away. But every day was a fun day. All right, I, I think I speak about that because I remember back in the book you um you talk about Mike uh, Barton, I believe his name mm -hmm. is. All right, and he kind of he was schooling you. Yeah, he was yeah. The first guy to get you the you know like yeah, he gave me some, some game, game yeah. behind the wall. <laughs> you know well. Before but, giving me the game, he gave me some intimidation. Exactly. You know so, what I'm saying? So, with that being said, that you said there was this is you kind of touch on it in the book, but you never kind of finish up on it. You mm -hmm. say you know, like at the time, the neighborhood that you was representing, the gentleman that had been killed, who was a leader at at a, at a, mm -hmm. at a town of that area, has supposedly he had something to do with it. Well, not supposedly has something to do. Let me say his, his individuals that he was that he was involved with. You know, people know the individuals he was involved with, his main friends, and that type of situation happened. So I was just surprised that he even recognized me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And and that's what he just told me, but I'm sure somebody had whispered it to him. Mm -hmm. That's because at that time I hadn't even made an impact. The only thing I'd ever done to be identified as from being from COVID, I'm fresh off of junior COVID. The only thing I've ever done to be identified basically was a few fights and caught with the pistol you see what i'm saying so once he approached me and, and identified me as from being from corbett my first mind state was like oh yeah you know not to say i'm acting like i'm from chelsea or nothing but damn okay i'm i'm a, I'm a big dog then man you you identify because i know you're a big dog you know what i'm saying so now you're saying am i from corbett i'm like i'm not gonna say no yeah you know yeah yeah i guess so you know what i'm saying but at the time we weren't even running with each other like that you know it was still us little dudes, younger dudes with 
you know, the older dudes doing their thing, so. So was there, was he, was he able to clear up, I guess, because you kind of leave that open, like, you don't, you don't for really reasons, say, like. For reasons, you know. For reasons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Because right. got, you know, it was like, you know, I want to give the story, but like I said, I still want to save certain pieces of people's personal business. So I gave the story, but then I left the in-depth details out, you know. Okay, all right. And then pulled it more into me and his relationship as to his role in whatever may have took place. All right. Know? So now you end up getting through that cycle of time. Yeah. And you come home. Mm-hmm. But you find yourself back. Oh, man, I went back a few times, man. But after that first time coming home, it was like, you know, like anybody that go to prison for their first time, you, you you build a thicker skin, you know. I'm feeling like, okay, I got some stripes now, you know what I'm saying? I did this. Now, after doing DYS for a week or so, getting caught with some heroin, it's like, okay, now I'm, I'm in my mind like I'm ready to demand a different type of respect now, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, So you just kind of just went back at it. And but, but my mind was focused on money but now at this now at this time though your friend that was rapping the had passed had away been killed had been passed away yes uh, rest in peace yep. uh, you know so did that want to make you sway to like you know maybe i should just you know stick to the music and get out the, nah, the street life that was never getting out the street life and not doing music was never like no. you know and like you know some dudes be like i just want to do music and leave the streets alone they work hand in hand with me it was like I'm going through the streets, and I want to rap. You know what I'm saying? My mind state was, I'm going to do both of these. This is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. As sad as it sounded, it was like, it was like when I came home, I'm, I was focused on getting me some paper. It was like, okay, we gang banging, we selling drugs on the app, we selling jumps. I had a little taste of money. You know what I'm saying? But now it's like the whole time I'm in prison, I'm con I I'm contemplating with this dude Eddie I met, and we're like. Okay, so this is like my, what time is this? Is this is at the end of the bid, the, for that bid right there. The very there. first bid? Yeah, the very first the bid very we're first talking, bid. we're like, that's when I met Eddie. Mm, okay. And uh, we're like, yo, we're going to get some money. I'm going to get me some money. We're going to get me some money. I'm going to get me some money. So mm -hmm. my whole mind state was like, when I get home, I'm getting me some paper. Mm -hmm. And Eddie, he plays an interesting part in the Yeah, place, no you know, doubt. A very interesting part. No in doubt. Place. You know, how long were you all cellmates? Yeah. One year, mm -hmm. so y'all watch each other's back. Y'all was watch each other's back, man. It's, it's, you know, held each other down. That was my dude. That was really my dude for a minute, you know. And mm -hmm. and 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 that translated into something prior to everything else that occurred. It's like I came home first mm -hmm. on pro. I came home on parole though. So once I came home, I immediately got to trying to get me some paper. Mm -hmm. Once he came home. I showed that, you know, I, it ain't like, some, some dudes you go to jail where you don't befriend everybody. One of the main things I really gonna do in my old days, like going to prisons in my 30s, no more bringing friends home. You know what I'm saying? I meet you there, I leave you there. If I didn't know you from the street prior to that, everybody got plans in jail. You know, when we get out, we gonna, we gonna, we get out. When you get back to the street, nine times out of 10, you getting right back to your homeboys. You know what I'm saying? It's like a defense mechanism. You link with somebody so that y'all can look out for each other, food, phone, however it go. But Eddie was the one dude who it was like, okay, you home? Come, come see, I got you. I'm, I'm doing X, Y, Z now. I'm about to come bless you. As soon as he came home, I blessed him, bang. What, what I could, because it wasn't really all the way up. You know what I'm saying? It was, it, it was probably just was on an ounce. Mm -hmm. So it really wasn't up. Yeah, but I, but I took what I had and blessed him, mm -hmm. you know? And it came back full circle once I violated and came home. Once I violated and came home now, he then turned into something a whole lot different from the 18 months I had to do, 16 months I had to do to finish up the bid. He then turned into something. And now he then threw it back to me full circle plus. So it was like the relationship was still there, you know. Yeah, so so you kind of jumped ahead. But you go from, like, at that time, you jump, you met your dad, you come back in a response with your dad. Yeah, oh, yeah, so yeah. So at your early age, you talk about how your dad, he was a heavy drinker, and yeah. he was kind of abusive, and your mom was like, enough is enough, and she was like, it's over. But yeah. now you, you're an older young man, or you're a young man, and you you messing with a chick, yeah, that and was explain, crazy. Explain, ex tell me how this story happened. Oh, man. So my friend Calvin Murphy, Callie, you probably know him. They call him Callie. Callie at the time was messing with Bobby Brown's sister. Mm -hmm. 
So that was kind of big, and it's funny because Cali looked like Bobby, not pre say because it was just it's just coincidental how it happened. He used to wear the Gumby to school. He was fly, you know, going to get the Gucci jackets from um, Dapper Dan and the whole nine yards, and um, getting money on Norfolk, getting a lot of money, you know, breakdown money though back then. So he yeah. stayed fly. So he coincidentally starts dating Carol, Carol Brown. Now he just brings me over to meet. Her girl, Mary Cobb. He's like, yo, man, I'll be at Bobby's sister's house, X, Y, Z. She started letting him use a little car. And, you know, she got a nice little girl over there, man. You should come over and meet her. First time, I was like, whatever, whatever. And I ended up popping up over there with him. As soon as I came through the door, me and my father, we do, we are known for looking well and alike. As soon as I come in the door, probably about 20 minutes of me being there, they're like, Without asking me my last name, you know, and back then it was just like Mike. A lot of people know me and reference me as Mike McNeil, but to these females who don't know me, it was just like, hey, Mike, this is, this is, uh, this is, um, Mary, Mary, this is Mike. So we sitting there for like 20 minutes, man, and she's like, man, you look familiar. This was for like, this went on for like 20, 30 minutes. Like, you look familiar. You look familiar. You look familiar. With me being from Mattapan and from being from Roxbury, Orchard Park, it was like. We really didn't bump heads with each other. And there was no problem then, but I just didn't ride Dorchard Park or Roxbury much. Then she asked me, what's your last name? Once I said McNeil, man, it was like everything went crazy in there, man. It went crazy. She's like, McNeil? I'm like, yeah, you got a father name? I'm like, yeah, your father's name's Will. They call him Mac. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. How y'all know? I ain't seen my father in like five, six years now. Mm -hmm. Because he went from down the street to whatever situation he had. Rest in peace with Miss Brown. And they're like, yo, we got to call her mom. You know, Michael's over here writing the Mac son. She goes into something. I could tell by the pause of her on the phone, like, Mac son. Because I'm sure, because the way, the, how loving and caring Miss Brown was, I'm sure she constantly asked him about me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So without him being able to deliver, now that I've got to meet her personally, rest in peace before she passed, we've got very close. And I, I can tell that she had asked him several times. Why aren't you bringing your son to the table? So I guess probably it's just being ashamed as a man and being able to say, I, I destroyed that situation. His mom's will speak to me. He just, whatever excuse he made for not bringing me around, because he had been around him probably five years prior to me coming around. So once Ms. Brown immediately was like, bring him by. So basically Bob and him probably lived in Randolph here and a gated community up the street. So it was only like 10 minutes around the corner from where Carol stayed and where my mom stayed. So once we got there, it was just like, wow, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, what's happening with you? You know, uh, you know, it, it like the whole, to be honest, man, it was like, if it wasn't, and I don't want to sound, because I was never starstruck about it. Like me and Bob don't even have a, a, a what's up, what's up relationship. You know, it's just because when I was around his family, he was always on tour. These are those days. He's aware of who I am. Me, me and his brother Tommy are close. I've been around Tommy, Tina. And, and and those type of people, but Bob was basically moving, but he knows of Mac, of Mac's you, son, you Mike. Were at the wedding, correct? I was at the wedding, yeah, uh, that's yeah. So that's what I'm telling you. Like we were, we 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 got a what's up, what's up, but we never really kicked yeah. it, you know, yeah. as well as I did with Carol and the rest of the family. All right, all right, all right. So I wasn't on no starstruck yeah, thing. It was just, I, if it wasn't for that situation, I don't believe me and my father would have really even talked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting. So she plays a major part in your life. Brown. She's yeah. kind of like, you know, she's oh, man, man. Tremendously, and tremendously. Tremendously. Before I went back on the violation I was telling you about, I went up to Forest Street, Plymouth Forest Street Camp. Now, at the time, that was a minimum security. They um, they would let you get food boxes mailed in. You know what I'm saying? And I, my father had issues with the law. So anything that he gave me, I knew she gave him. You know what I'm saying? He's a hell of an electrician, but he wasn't working. You know what I'm saying? So anytime... I was every every week, man, packages, food packages, like they could mail up a 50 box of canned goods and all that up to you. I didn't want for nothing. So what did you go back to jail for this time? Just violation. Matter of fact, um, oh, it's a funny thing. story. They told me to go to Burger King. Mm -hmm. They told me to go to work at Burger King, and I was like, you know, I had ran and gave him the run of the mill, but I can't find a job, can't find a job. He finally came to me and said, I got a job for you. Okay. You, you're going to McDonald's, you're going to Burger King in Mattapan Square, go look for XYZ, they're waiting on you. Mm. I knew this, and this was a Friday, and I suppose that, no, this was a Thursday, and I suppose I had went there Friday. 
So come that Monday, I knew he was going to be knocking at the door with the, with the monsters to bring me back because there was no way I was going to work at Burger King at that time either. All right, all right, all right. So I know at one point, right, now you're getting money. Yeah. We getting money, money, or we just grinding? And you, you, you're getting, it seems like, I don't, I don't know what point, but you said this is early on. You talk about the feds being on you. But oh, you yeah. talk about a gentleman by the name of Ben. And you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Me, he's telling on me. No, we're getting money then now. Yeah, so this is when you're getting money. Yeah, we're getting so money is, then. This is before that. Yeah, yeah, wow, we're getting money after now. That, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is after that. We're getting money now. Whenever Bing's in the, in the equation, we get money yeah. now. Rest in like, peace, Bing. Yeah, rest in peace. How did you know like that transpired? Because you were just like, yo, this dude, he he got the feds on me. That was, that's what you stated. I knew because, you know, I knew, well, make a long story short, prior to me, Prior to him allegedly being took, people that was involved in this case was like, once he finally got snatched, was like, yo, they came to him that night. He ended up getting away and was like, you know what I'm saying, in the hospital, who did this to you? Who did this to you? You know what I'm saying? And I knew I was hard already just by certain little things, man. I had attorneys, man. It was like... You know, at that time, I had just finished beating the kidnap case. So it was just like, prior to him, even him getting snatched, it was like... So you didn't think, so So I'm saying, so let, that you know the feds are on you, you didn't think, yo, let me just chill? Let me that just wasn't chill. the mindset, you know what I'm saying? That, nah, that wasn't the mindset. The mindset was, okay, we just got to play it better now. Because my whole thing was, even if I wasn't told the feds was on me, my mind state and my movements always was, they on me. That's just that's just how I move. Well, in this one, you, you in this in this part of the story, you talk about now they following you. Yeah. That's the first time you this, actually like, yo, the feds is following me. When they pulled me over from Harry the Greeks up at Roxbury Court. Exactly. When I left Bing's house, exactly. matter of fact, that's when that's I like seen him. Story. That's when exactly. I seen him. So once we left Bing's house, but I had knew that. See, prior to that, I had been threatening him, and 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 you know, little small things had occurred, man. It was like I was aggressive about getting my money. Let me say it like that, because it was, it was a lot of money. He was moving good, so I was hitting him. So it was, I was aggressive about getting my money. So I felt as though I kind of spooked him. You know what I'm saying? I felt as though I left him no option but to either, either do something to me or tell on me. That's why I felt like I left it. You know what I'm saying? And, and at that time, doing something to me wasn't an option for him. So I always felt like, you know, if, if, if he didn't put him on me, we're too aggressive on his phone. And also, he's in the street getting money. So, you know, and the people he's intertwined with, it was like, I just knew through the phone conversations and stuff we had, somewhere something had went wrong. So, so now, like you said, now that you are getting money at this point in time, <clears throat> you mentioned that your roommate, Eddie, now, he's, he's really up now. He's up. Come back home, and he's he kind of put you in play. Put me in play immediately. Immediately, it's like I didn't need for nothing. I, it's like you know how, you know what I'm saying. You start from the bottom and all that, and you grind up to the top. Now nah, I was like, yo, it's okay. Remember that little quarter you dropped, you threw me. Now I'm gonna show you. As a matter of fact, not only the quarter, I took from the marshals and get a couple little pieces of clothes. So that marshals back then ended up being Mimi Marcus for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I can remember the day we got there. It was like get some clothes. Now at the time when I was the little shit I excuse me, the little stuff I was doing, I still hadn't I didn't even know what Mimi Marcus was to keep it a hundred. I didn't even know what Copley we used to go down Copley, but I didn't really hit the inside them stores. So when she said go in there, man, I started looking at the tags. I'm like, okay, man, you see what this costs? She's like, man, get some clothes, man. I'm like, yo, man. See, but at the time, I had been hearing what part you're leaving out. I had been hearing that there's some African dude asking my boys about me. And it's funny because I knew through conversation that Eddie's father's African and his mother's white. I knew that. But I didn't consider him to be African because he's so light-skinned. You see what I'm saying? So when my boys was telling me, yo, this African dude looking for me, I'm in my mind like there must be some dark-skinned African dude, damn near bone in his nose, looking for me. But they're like, yo, he's African, man. He's looking for you. This dude, Eddie, he's African dude looking for you. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I hadn't been hearing from the street that he's coming up. You know what I'm saying? So that hadn't been like nowadays stuff come through the joint before, it, you know, damn near as soon as it hit the street. I hadn't heard nothing like he eating like that. So once he came, I'm pull up like six, seven hundred dollars worth of clothes, man. No, I pull up two outfits and he's like, man, get some clothes, man. Get some clothes, man. He's like, yo, I'm telling you this one. I'm like, you see what this costs? Get some clothes, man. 
So now they were like, send me $800 worth of clothes. Like, okay, what's next? I could have took that and got me some, you know what I'm saying? The next day it was like, I'm going to pull up and you're going to be straight. And it, 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 I probably was home three days, bro. It was, it was like, you know, I don't have a bottom to the top story. I, it was like, okay, he put me immediately on. Get with your dudes. Here's what you're going to do and you're going to be rocking. And it was rocking from there until we finally, you know, the small disengage and all of that occurred, man. We was rocking. So where's the music at this point? You know, like, what, at like where you as, as a rapper? What, what are you doing right now with your music career? Oh, man, right now? Investing in this yeah. I, was, I always wondered, like... I am. Are you? This is I the first time. You, like, like, never, you never talk about, like, yeah, I went and bought a whole bunch of studio equipment, or I went and, you know put a label together or I wouldn't I never hear any you know why like that's, that's real investing in yourself as an artist that's real because see you know the crazy thing about it me and Videl talk about this all the time <laughs> there was a time where I would do music right listen how listen how silly it is this is because of my involvement in the street it was like here I am with a couple hundred thousand dollars and a talent but I'm watching dudes like Master P and baby create record labels with what they say was tens and twenties of thousands. You see what I'm saying? So at the time when I was with Sword with Zeno and he was putting together wise guys and, and we was running, my vision wasn't music. Although I could do it, that wasn't my true passion and vision. I love writing, but it because if it was, I would have said I didn't need y'all. I could probably you know what I'm saying? Start a record label. I could do this. I can do that. But I was so, I was so into the street that I was dumbfounded to the business of it. I'm watching the masterpiece do this, but all along I'm feeling okay. We good over here. Z got the source. I'm good, man. I'm we good. We going to the top this way. You see what I'm saying? And 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 that's where I went. I went wrong. I regret that. If there's anything I regret, I regret being that talented at the time having the finances to do it and not doing it. I don't take nothing away from Ray for it, but it was just me. It's like, why didn't I say to myself, hold on, I don't need nobody. I could, just like you say, T-shirts, vans, wrap it up, CDs, and start moving. It wasn't until I fell off that I'm realizing, oh, snap. Now I can do this to, you know what I'm saying? When the resource or the money wasn't there anymore. So I kick myself and ask for that a lot, that when I was up, I didn't more business-mindedly think of how to do this on my own. You know what I'm saying? I had the nuts for it. I had the dudes behind me to do it, but I never brought it to the table. The same dudes that worked the source and my dudes. It was so, it, I was so blinded to the game that even if, I wouldn't have, even if I wouldn't have been with Ray, my dudes worked in the source. I didn't have to be with Ray. They were still going to push me because we from the hood but I didn't present that idea even when I had the money to do it not only me I had dudes don't forget there's a lot of dudes that had bread that was around me they would have even invested if I just presented the idea of being a company and I just never came to mind I, I missed the bus I missed the bus on that yeah. when I, as I read the book I thought you more because you, you, you speak about yourself too, and 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 I, and I love the person you grow to become. You know I me mean? because it's interesting. I mean, it really goes from like, man, wow, because it, it, we get deeper as 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 the time goes on. But you um, it's like you were stubborn and you wouldn't listen to anybody at that time. That's was where I was like, at. No, I was just like, you know, you was just you. It didn't matter if someone would even came with that idea. I felt like you wouldn't have taken it in anyway. It, it was like at the time, you know, it was like. And that's not to downplay nobody, man. But if you ran with me, you was getting money with me. I was running what was considered a rather call it big, little, medium. I was running a small organization. Mm -hmm. So that was you your know, main priority. That was my main priority. You know what I'm saying? The people that ate with me off it, you know, the dudes, the females. So, I, I, so now I, I want to say at one point in time you switch up. Now you're not dealing with just Eddie. You have another connector. Yeah, because with. of because. You know, certain trials and tribulations. Now I'm dealing with it. With it. Well, now I've, not only that, at that time we didn't have trials and tribulations. It became like a, a friendly competition thing. I felt like, okay, you know, even though he had this, 
my hustle exceeded his at, at one point. So it was like, you have this, you, and I'm coming to see you for this when I need to take this thing to another level. And, and, and the average dude just ain't going to give it to you like that, let you just, I'm going to call it a friendly competition. You know what I'm saying? Before this problem was just like I felt leveled off, like I see men's taking off. I, you just not going to take off. You see what I'm saying? So I knew I needed to, okay, we still friends. I need to get me another situation so you can't calculate me and or probably you know, keep you me. Know what, that's together. Like, like, you know. <laughs> but but I'm too bullheaded. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, your it's like won't allow, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. I mean? and I'm, you know, I wanted to it's do like, me. Let me. Just stay right here, and if I master this right here and hold this. But see, then everything's a blessing because. A lot of times it don't make sense how I move, but my movements have made sense because they actually went. Say if we and him would have stayed together and no, nothing ever occurred. They went to the feds years ago before I ever got arrested by the feds. You see what I'm saying? The situation that him and all them dudes got caught up in. Now, if we were still getting money, I'd have been in that. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's very interesting. But now, the, 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 the gentleman that you're dealing with, you know, mm -hmm. you know he gets into some shit. Mm -hmm. He ends up calling you for some backup. Be you told. hold him down. You know, like, y'all getting in a shootout. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a full-fledged. Be told. He's fronting. He's half-stepping. Full-fledged shootout. He, he jump out the car. And he's half-stepping. Yeah, but he's half-stepping. He's, he's, he's crazy in the air with it. He's really not really getting busy. And I peeped the whole fronting on him. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, B. That ain't what you called me for. Because that wasn't what we was doing at that time. We came down... We was running down on something. We never, it was never like, let's get in these cars and start fronting. Anytime we got in the car to move, it was like, yo, without saying, uh, uh, there's a possibility we're going to jail because everybody that was in the car with me, front, back seat, was on the same mind state. We're going for business. Ain't no plan. And, you know, and I, anybody that was rocking with me at the time. There's a lot of drives like that in your, car, in your book. It yeah. Like a story of you jumping in the car and, oh, man. you know, Man, and you have to say, let me tell you what's illest thing. When I could write a book like this, right? Let me tell you, and, and tell those stories. Book been out two months and no one has contradicted me on it because there's individuals that's around me. Like, like you couldn't tell a book like this, man, and with, with, with the type of dudes it's that I've movie. been it's around. A, it's really a movie. Hold on, let, let me tell you, but my dudes, like, I would be embarrassed to tell these stories. I couldn't tell a lie knowing that my dudes first are going to look at it. You see what I'm saying? So so that's the confirmation to the truth right there that the real dudes who I... It ain't like no one's like, let me just let Miz run with these secrets. This is real shit. You know what I'm saying? That 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 when I was... Before anybody else, I knew I had to put this in front of my team that could say, this is what happened. Rather he chooses to put himself on front line and not, I can validate that these are occurrences that went down. So... Here we are now, a couple months in, and still no one is, because this is what it is, and it's a hundred. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so, um, I don't even want to jump around. I want to come back a little bit. We kind of jumped, we kind of jumped ahead That's about, cool. so how did, how did you get, you know, how did you end up with the wise guys? How did that, you know, at what point did you now start, you know, now you're getting, now you're part of the wise guys, and Benzino has officially said, I like you as an artist, Mike, and I want you to actually not just, be a well, wise guy member, but I want you to be one of the faces of the wise okay, guy. Okay, well, I had earned, I had earned some, I had sort of started earning some, some respect from Ray or some acknowledgement. Let me say that, you know, I believe that me being a part of Corbett was one of the main reasons, you know, and that, that because that's where he was strongly pulling towards, you know, even though he had the Four Corners background now, him and Tony and, and, and him and my dudes is hanging more strongly. So I believe that pulled me to the forefront just because I'm from the block. Along with that, I had done, excuse me, I had done some flavor tapes where I went bananas on. So it was like, you know, Jeff two times had his flavor tape thing going on back in the days. You, okay. He'd do it in his house and sell Shout out Jeff two times. Yeah, he's put out these tapes, mixtape flavor, one flavor, two. So they had got up to seven. And Flavor Tape 7, I'll never forget. That's when I stood out. I did front and back side, and I went bananas on it. So now it was like, okay, he's arrived. You know what I'm saying? It only took much back then to arrive. You probably couldn't even write an album. You do a crazy 16 back then, 
you have arrived. You see what I'm saying? So I did two crazy 16s, and it was like, yo, dude could really go ham. And, and that was my best work at that time. So you you flowing. So music, flowing. Is, most music is... Now it's official. He money is bankrolls up. Nah, not at that time. Not a flavor tape set. No, no, I'm saying now. I'm saying once you, once he, now that he says, oh, you, now yeah, your wise guy, now that he's, he's seen you, yeah. your bank rolls up. Yes, yeah. But yeah, see, yeah, we yeah. had already had private yeah. plans that didn't yeah. fall through. Yeah, but your music is now being heard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You kind of like being a face of a, of a music group. Yeah. Um, you can, you can take your, right now, you can kind of take your money any way you want to go to cop because you got enough of it. Yeah. Um, The guy you was copping from. Toes. Let's just call him B Toes. B Toes. Her Toes. He leaves town after that bang bang shoot up stuff mm -hmm. now. He's spooked. Yeah. You end up sliding by his house to pick up what he left you. Mm -hmm. To pick up. That's from Joanne. And um his lady and I you know knocking Joanne down. End up going, you know. End up knocking Joanne down. But this is your plug. This is your connect. End up knocking Joanne down. She can't speak. She speak piece of English. She barely can speak full English. Was this some type of like, I crossed the boundary? Was this man, some type of... Let me say this too, man. Let me say this, man. You know, like when we speak on growth, because like, like there's a part in the book that a lot of people talk to me about the book, but, not a, but no one yet has come to me and see where I say I was really apologetic about the shit that I'd done. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, like like people people will say, like, for instance, if you got $10 million, right, and you don't look out for this one, don't look out for this one, this person, some people, to have money is not something that everyone knows what to do. Some people get a certain way in their head. And when I was crossing those lines with dudes, females, you know, and I apologize. To, I mean, it's not an apology thing. It was about growth. In my mind, it was like, I could just do this shit. So what? I, I would just say, with him being your plug. No, nah, I didn't care. So, and I guess, a respect thing. Like, yeah. all right, this man is, you know, he's my plug. He's giving me he's that just trust. just a plug, it, though. It, it See, in my nothing. mind, he was just a plug. He was just, he was, that was it. There was no friendship. There was no love. You're just a plug. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget, every time he sold me a brick, he was getting money too. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's just a business relationship. Just, so, uh, so okay, so the business relationship, there's not a there's not a mutual respect. Like, so if I'm in business with you, is your, is your woman off bounds? No, nah, not at that time. Not man. at that time. At that time, and plus, like I said, I was lost. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I was lost, man. So, I, I was, I was, I was, I was, I, I was dealing with power, money, and in my mind, it was like. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? I didn't think about it to be like, is this right or wrong? It's just like, you know, what's happening? And now, not only are you getting money, you got a gang. You got, got a, a gang of bras. You got a gang of secret bras. You're you, you, you just like, you sliding bras. this yeah. way. You sliding that way. You sliding yeah. this way. You, yeah. You, yeah. you know? And, that, and, you know, and like I said again, you know, it, see, a lot of things too, man, I could be blamed for everything because, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a guy, man. But then, you know, sometimes, sometime, man, when you really look, sit back and look at things, right, it's like, if you, certain people are attracted to certain things. I never, ever, but the reason I moved the way I moved, because I, other dudes wasn't doing the things that I was doing. So what that showed me that it's not me. They weren't attracted to me as an individual. Because if I wasn't moving with the paper, I would have never had those situations. So I'll take the blame. But in reality, the money, the, the mindset the females were in that allowed those situations because of their lust for money isn't all totally on me. Yes, I was wrong for the moves I was making because I crossed lines and I hurt some people's feelings. Dudes and dudes that I really love and care about, even to this day, dealing with women. But with that being said... The things that I was doing, I wouldn't have been able to do without money. Like, bro, Joe, Joe, bro, Joe wasn't doing sleeping with four or five friends. And, and they all in suspicion. You see what I'm saying? Why was I able to? Because of the money. So I never felt it all the time. And I felt like, in my mind, fuck y'all. You know what I'm saying? You want to be stupid? 
thinking like, like I don't know with my car, my money. I'm not going to give it to you. But if me just having that attracts you, whatever your goal is to get it for me, you're never going to get all these few punk dollars I'm giving it to you. But if that's going to pick you step out of character, then I felt like fucking step out of character. Then. You see what I'm saying? But if, you know, I'll take responsibility, but it wasn't all on me. It's the mindset of a person that says, he got this, and, and, and I'm just fucking with like Like a girl messes with a dude with a car. Do you believe in your mind you're going to have his car? I don't get it. So, so I take responsibility, but it wasn't I felt, just I felt, on me. I felt, though, that was... That was not just the only. There was there was one. That was one of many. That was one of that many. Was one of many. That was one and of I many. think um I think the 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 the, the um the one that kind of stood out the most I would say is with your cousin. Yeah. And I think there was there was some feelings there. When you say yeah. I, I don't think that one was about money because you talked about how yeah. you all you all were kind of like yeah. you know it was almost like you know don't be talking to my my girl out in public yeah, you know so yeah. she kind of stood out the most like okay there was some feelings there yeah. and, and and but she's your cousin's girl yeah, yeah and they live yeah, together yeah 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 you know like like i say man you know and that's why it took so long to write the story i to be honest right that was the hardest part of the story to write later for the losses later for the for everything else because if you read in the beginning that's who brought me out the house yeah so that's, that's who taught me everything that i know not only like well even with my father not being there that's who showed me what the streets is about and that's someone who i highly look up to so what I, with that being said it shows you where money will you know what i'm saying i've tried to cover things up with the fact that i was like he's straight he can get anything from me but all those things that I was trying to cover it up with really couldn't take away from the fact that I'm really crossing my number one guy behind his back for some skins. And then it became bigger than skins, you know. If like if it was just skins, I could have had it and dug it up and put it under the under the rug. But I became so so infatuated with being able to do these things with this with these women that it became so repetitious that it became a part of me. You see what I'm saying? It was like, okay, you're going to do this today. I'm going to brush you off the next week. I'm going here. I'm going here. And it became such a routine and a chain that I started feeling like I need this chain. I need this now. I need this. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's like, okay, in my mind, I would cover it up and be like, she's no good for him. But who am I to judge that? Because if you're sleeping with me, you're no good for him. She's a skeezer anyways. That's on my mind. Those are the things that I would try to cover it up with. Like, she's a trick anyways. You know what I'm saying? But but really, that's not the case. I would cover it with that. The reality of it is, whatever this person's personality and character is, I'm doing some fuck shit. Yeah, so I, I don't think it had nothing to do with the woman. I think it just had more to do with your relationship with their, with their mate. Yeah, you know, so I I seen that on on a couple of times. So that was so I said the first time was your plug, the second time was your um your cousin. Yeah, I think so. This was an interesting, uh, interesting woman in your life too. Yeah, the white young young lady. Yes, sir. Now you're getting into pimping. Yes, well, like I said the other day, at a small interview, it's, when they speak when I speak on the pimping, I never want no one to get the idea that I was someone going out to solicit women. Well. I guess it, it found you. I'll be, it you know, I'll, I'll be, a, and everything you wrote, I would say, I take it for being honest. Personally, I don't think you would. Nah, you, I, I take everything I for one hundred percent. There were people accuracy. with me. There was people with so, me when it happened. She because, just found like me. you said, what was so hard to write? Like, man, if you could put that in there, yeah. man, there, there, there wasn't much else to tell a story about. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know that, and, and I would say. Man, you, you have to be a strong man to even put that out there, a lot of that stuff, to no say, doubt, I'm willing to no share doubt. that. So thank you for even sharing all that stuff, you know, because I know that got to, that's a lot to share your life like that, you know. So, you know, it was heavy. It was yeah. heavy. It was heavy. Like, that found me, man. I was never, like, dressing in the shoes and trying to act like Goldie, man. It was just at the time in the world she was in, I had everything that she seen people with having, you know. And, and, and at the time... Boston was, when, when those situations occurred, there wasn't too many young dudes in my age pimping. Like, there were older dudes that were really controlling the pimp stroll downtown. You know, I could name them by name. They was older cats. Like, when I was in my 20s, they probably was in their 30s, 40s. You see what I'm saying? So, so 
not only did she just become attracted to me because I had the young, had the materialistic things that they had, just the swagger change. You know what I'm saying? She was younger. She was even. She was. Matter of fact, they had her when they shouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Probably could have went to prison. You see what I'm saying? But she was of age when she got with me. She's actually she's probably three years younger than me now. So so what I'm saying is though they had her when. They violated. Somebody had violated somebody's daughter when they had her and taught her the game. So when she came to me, she had been in the game 10 years, a veteran now, and just came to me for, and said, I can't even say for guidance. Came to me because I'm fly. I'm, 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 I'm dressing. I'm doing the same she thing they're you. doing. It's the she game chose she chose me. And was like, all you got to do is make this call and put me up. But I'm like, make a call. Now, being aggressive is nothing at the time. Okay, well, we'll do better than that. We're going to smash this nigga. What, what do I need to do? You're going to give me some money? But I wasn't really so interested in the money at that time because I didn't know what she was capable of doing. It was just worth a try. You see what I'm saying? Because I hear the stories, but I, I'm getting money. So it's like, what are you going to really bring to the table? So when she came with a couple thousand dollars, it's like, oh, this shit might be real. Oh, this shit is real. She's not telling me I'm going to make some money. She's like, listen. I'm going to, I need you tomorrow. I'm going to meet you back here, Franks. I'm going to grab whatever clothes I can get, X, Y, Z, and I need you to fuck away from this dude, and I'm going to come with some money, and you need to call him. And it's like, where that paper at? Oh, shit, you got some paper. How much of this you really get a night? X, Y, Z. Oh, man, I got a place for you to stay. You will go down Mass Ave at my spot then. Fuck it. If you really get this type of paper at night, and she taught me, Exactly, and told me. Basically, she was. It's crazy because she would say, "This is how pimps do it," without saying, "Apply that pressure on me." You see what I'm saying? She's giving me the game, but for me to apply. So, I never went out though, man, looking to be like, "I need me a hoe." You know what I'm saying? Because that never was my thing. I've always been a provider. And my thing was getting up, going to get it, blood, sweat, and tears. You know what I'm saying? So. Never been lazy, so Pippin was never my thing. Man. She introduced me to it and I ran with it. So so like I say in the in the, in the book, um, did you ever go back with any of those relationships outside of your cousin and and, and and like fix those relationships? Of course. My cousin and my cousin T, we good now. No, no, you speak about that, but oh, I'm yeah. saying outside of your cousin, did you ever go back and fix any of the relationships you kinda of speak yeah. about like with the females or with the guys. females and, and yeah, like their guys or whatever. Everybody, everybody one on one. Everybody I've up. everybody intimately I've spoke to over the years. Don't forget this story is probably 15, 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. Throughout the years, man, we've all then chopped it up, man, because mm -hmm. you know, you gotta think, there was a time where I became very very talkative. When I became an alcoholic after everything. Mm -hmm. We would get together. And Hold on, so, like, so let's double back before you yeah. get to that that story of your life because we we you still bubbling now. Yeah, yeah, you still yeah. bubbling now. Let's oh, we, get yeah, to, well, let me now say you yeah. get all the girls. Let me say yeah, we've talked strongly, but everybody was okay. like, ah, oh, probably cried drunk. All right, they shut up my bag, you yeah. know. All right, but th now that there's one before we move on into that chapter and before that chapter ends, and Eddie and them are still out here getting money though, so mm -hmm. you kind of jump before they went to jail, and that now this is your guy. Mm -hmm. Now, a gentleman that, that's hanging with y'all, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, um, Jinx, I believe, mm -hmm. is his name Jinx? Mm -hmm. All right, he um, supposedly robs Eddie's guy. Yeah, some paper get missing. Um, save some for the people that ain't bought the book. Man. But, but, okay, but, okay, but, okay I'm not going to tell the whole story, but what I want to get into it. is... He puts you in a situation. Exactly. To because where, this is, the, this is my your, guy. This is your guy. This is my guy. So, this is my guy. This is prior to any law enforcement issues they may have had or mm -hmm. anything that to be like, I couldn't officially say this is my guy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so now, me and him still got this report. Me and him still got this relationship, even though we're not constantly getting money together. Mm -hmm. But that's still my guy. The money wasn't the issue between me and Eddie. Me and Eddie didn't have just a money relationship. Mm -hmm. It was like we liked it to see both of us, two fly niggas that's really getting to the sack that said we was going to get it from the joint. Mm -hmm. This is what we said. We were, it was like we would get together sometimes and just be like, yo, remember what we said? Like the same conversation. I don't care if I ain't seen him in months. When we pull up somewhere, it'd be like, yo, remember what we said we was going to get this money? Not even calculating who got the most or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, damn, nigga, remember we said we're going to get this paper? So now this is still my guy, even though we're not getting money together. But even with that being my guy from jail, these are my friends. 
You see what I'm saying? You really never want to be in a situation where you got to choose from your guy and your friend. And certain things, it's like, comes with, comes with guilty by association. You know what I'm saying? It's like... So it is not like a right is right and a wrong is wrong? Nah, like, not what, nah. It is, it is, but, but see, it is a right is right and wrong is wrong. But when we playing with stakes of somebody's about to get hurt, you got to choose a side now. You got to choose what's more important to you at this time. Because now someone that got took, money's gone, the streets is about to turn up. So now there's no being in between. So now the small high and by relationship me and Eddie had in a year in prison, that goes completely out the window now because you're ready to possibly try to do something to my friend now. So now it's move time. So that fast, you, you, so, you have to change. So there, was there any way to just get at Just like... No, nah, not when something's already done. What's done is done. I, you know, what's done is done. You know? So I know you don't want me to give up too much about the book. Because this, this is a very interesting part yeah, of the book. Yeah. Um, like at what point, you know, so I, I, I'm going to speak just a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, about the story. You a, a friend of yours... Mm-hmm actually take some th- mm-hmm. something for somebody mm-hmm. and it re- and it, re- and it basically is part of it what they took was theirs mm-hmm. you couldn't just get in front of this and say yo i'm gonna straighten this out i'll call you back in 24 hours there wasn't let me say this it was like even with that being said say if, say if i could have done that right there still comes with a disrespect that there's still going to be tension there you see what I'm saying? Once you do, it's like right now, if a motherfucker slap you in the mouth, right? And I could step between y'all and be like, y'all chill, y'all chill, y'all cool for the moment. You're going to walk away still in your mind and be like, motherfucker slap me in the mouth and slap me in the mouth. You see what I'm saying? So someone still walks away feeling resentment about the situation. And with that being said at the time and where the streets were playing, even to today, it's like, can you chance the fact of knowing someone has an issue with you without addressing the issue? So there was really no sugarcoating shit. It was like, this happened. We're never going to be friends again. How? Because uh, I felt like it went from, it just went, it went fast. It, went it just fast. took off. It, it went, it off. went, it went all the way as far as it, you know. I guess it ended, you know, as far as you. Well, it didn't even continue though. It didn't wasn't just. It turned into a kidnapping. Mm-hmm. It turned into just a, a shooting or two, mm-hmm. correct? So it couldn't, none of that could have been prevented. Like before, you like know, right at, you it, know, it, like it just, should have been prevented when because I'm, I see that because like so I revert back to that that time when I met you as a child. Like if something's wrong, Mike's gonna get ready to it and address it and be direct. You know what I mean? So that that feeling of Mike. If something wrong or right is right is wrong and wrong person, I don't give a fuck if it's my man, if my sister's my brother. If you're wrong, you're wrong, yo. We're going to okay, straighten this shit the fuck out. Re- remember in the book, I wasn't even in town when the situation had occurred. So by the time I touched down, it was just too dirty for me to try to fix. You see what I'm saying? Already out of I, had already, I had already had a leash on the situation. You know, I had a leash on the situation. Like, if I wasn't, let me say this, if I wasn't out of town, that situation wouldn't occur. Because even, and this is like, me, me and my dog, we talk like, he had already addressed the idea to me. Like, exactly. You, speak on man, I wanna, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, nah. Exactly. You know, and out of respect for me, it's like, ah, I, 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 but now I'm not around. I'm not around to say, nah. So, you know, and when you hungry and you ready to bust your move, you gonna bust your move. You know what I'm saying? And 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 some dudes, and you know, some dudes, some dudes, I'm gonna say like, got the mindset of at the end of the day. See, that ain't how I think, but at the end of the day, there's nothing can break me and his bond. Not for these dudes. So I believe he was moving under those assumptions. Did what he had to do, and it did fall into play like he assumed because it put me in a position to say, okay, fuck them niggas. You know, I, I, I'm getting my own bread anyways. But now, now that I got to choose. I'm with my day one. So so this is just how the game is played. I was upset the fact that the situation happened that I can't pull over and smile with my dude from the joint. But now it's like you have to be in the streets. You got to be able to change feeling fast. So it's like, okay, we're not going to sit here and mope about why, 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 why. Fuck it. It's on. Everybody ride it up. We scrap, nigga, okay, I, that, that ain't my dude no more. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, if somebody got to go, I know it ain't you. 
You know what I'm saying? So this is what we have. This is the situation we have at hand now. So that broke our relationship. As tight as it was, as cool as we was. You know, this is my guy. This is my friend. So I'm going to move with him now. I could be upset to the day I die. I could be upset right now, you know, because we was that cool. But when it comes to my guy from from block to COVID, it's like we came up from fucking sandbox. I'm not no amount of money we didn't got no one two years in prison. So were you? Break. So you you spoke on you was able to go back and fix those not fix them but have a conversation. Were you able to go back and have a conversation with Eddie? Nah, no. Nah. After that, it was a wrap. We, yeah. That was probably the last time we spoke. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Once those, once the trials and tribulations and everything that took place, that was a lot. Well, I can't even say that because if you read, read the book, he actually saved my life after that. Mm, yeah, he actually saved car my the life time. in the car so downtown. You run up on So on with the car. A, without us even being, now I don't know if he saved my life for the fact that he wasn't ready for that type of type of smoke because there was a female in the car too. You see what I'm saying? Well, now, was the gentleman in the, in the car once, was it, wasn't y'all getting money together too at one point? Man, I was doing yeah. the car, he, he was my babysitter at one time. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he was my was babysitter. A, was a, man, his mo- I, I mo- found that, oh, our like, mothers, this is dude our you, mothers you worked together. Yeah, our mothers so. worked together. He was like a big cousin to me, but you know, throughout the, Throughout the situation, he just ended up being on that side. I ended up being on this side. But he knew the hood, and, you know, he grew up around Doozy. Him and his mother worked together, Polaroid, for over 20 years. You know what I'm saying? So he was someone I would probably call a cousin if we, you know what I'm saying? But this is just how the money had a way of playing shit. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, with, with that being said, he... Saved my life that night. I was, you know, I don't want to not pull up when somebody tell me to pull up. So I pull up in the back alley down Chinatown. I'm just pulling up on some what's happening. What is it? What's good with you? You know, in my mind, my second, maybe second guessing, be like, nah, don't pull over. But then by not pulling over, you're assuming a position of defense or something's wrong. You see what I'm saying? If you ask me to pull over for a second, I don't. Now I'm already feeling like something's wrong. No matter if we're in the back alley, I'm by myself, over 20 niggas. So I chose to pull over. Then the pistol come out. Now it's like, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? My plan of innocence and smiling, they worked against me. Now this nigga got the pistol out. And it was Eddie who grabbed his arm and was like, nah, what it? Get the fuck out of here, Mike. So I, But like I said, it was a female in the car. And everybody ain't ready for that pressure like they say. Now let's not get it twisted. Everybody ain't got the same intensity with the street shit. I'm gonna fuck if you get keys, thousands, if you got a million. If you just ain't with that smoke like that, you just ain't with it. You know what I'm saying? And, and not to downplay, even he ever appealed to me as someone that was no motherfucking killer. You see what I'm saying? So with him having his girl there at the same time, I believe that downplay, that was one of the reasons. And plus, he just wasn't ready probably to have, no, have, have that on his hands at the time. You see what I'm saying? So, so when he told me to go, it was like, go. Go, fuck up out of here. So I will say, even with everything that occurred, he still took that moment to possibly, because I don't know what the fuck would have happened, but I can't say what wouldn't have, to possibly take me out of a detrimental situation. I'll say he did that. And that's with us not speaking after all the situation that occurred. Mm. Wow. So, yeah, a lot of shootings. Yeah. yeah. Right after that, I went and toned something down. Mm-hmm. So now you end up... Um, I think there's one more. Do you get you get in one more bad situation before you possibly go back to jail? Which one? Well, there's, 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 I gotta look at my notes so many, there's, 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 there's just so many. Now, but the source, but at the same time, now the wise guys is taking off. What we we spoke about, but um, oh, this is what I want to talk about right here. I had to pull out my notes. This, yeah, this is what I talk about. I had to get to I my notes. Can I can't talk about. I really don't want to talk about too much of the book, yeah, but. Yeah. But some of the books. You know I'm gonna try like, to plug a sale after this. Oh, and yo, buy the, I'm gonna tell you to buy the book. It reads like a movie. You know, I can't wait to shoot the movie, man. You know, oh, I'm gonna break the record. I can't wait till you present so it to me so we can do it. Yeah, so I think we, you know, I think we should, uh, you know, we're gonna take a chapter and shoot a chapter or two or something. Yeah. But man, this book reads like a movie. I swear. But um, you um, so you end up, you go, you get all the way to the top as an artist, right? Mm-hmm. You in the studio with Scarface. Mm-hmm. Boom, that was shaky at the first time, but you found yourself, you go in there, you bang that out. Mm-hmm. Um, you wind up, you wind up in Houston. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, y'all get in the neighborhood, no pistol, no nothing. Mm-hmm. But that stubbornness, 
Is that what got y'all in trouble that night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that was like, if you're talking about the night we was in the club, man, that was like, yeah, that was like stubbornness, man. It was like, so let me you know, paint a picture, just a little picture for them, because I don't want to give. Let me just paint a little picture, because I don't want to give up too much of the book. But Zeno got y'all in, in, in Houston for, mm-hmm. for a show, mm-hmm. and y'all out there to perform. No, actually, this no, we didn't go to perform. We went to the tenth anniversary. We really just went for the cookout. For the cookout, okay. we went for a cookout, and one of Little Jay's people's, Lonnie Mac, had just opened up a club. You know, you ever heard? I mean, you grew up on Scarface. You remember he'd be like, hey, my homie, Lonnie Mack. I know exactly what so, you're talking so about. So now we meet Lonnie Mack exactly. for the first time. So everybody got their different perception. Oh, once you hear Scarface say his name, he becomes famous to us. But you don't really know a man's character until you meet him and shit. So now, you know, he's opening up a club now. He's making him some more. So he asked dudes, did they want to perform? And that's where the performance came at. Like, after Z had already gave us the advice, listen, stay out them hoods. Don't go in them neighborhoods. Stay up, you know, basically every time we went somewhere, man, there was a lot of times we was in the hood, but a lot of times we were, we were in like high, high, good places where crime wasn't as high as everything else down the city. Say we was up, you know, so we'll be in California, we'll be up somewhere where it's just not, it can happen, but it is say we ain't in, con- we ain't on the Bloods and Crips block, we somewhere in a bungalow or something. Gotcha. So, so we didn't have to be in those situations, so with boredom, you know. We're like street dudes. Don't forget your mentality kicks in that real recognized real. We can go anywhere in town. Plus, I'd have been out. I used to go to the tunnel by myself with, with a couple of my dudes, man, and be in New York around a bunch of dudes. So that mentality kicked in like real recognized real. But we didn't understand the beast we was up against with being artists. You see what I'm saying? It's like, now, if we'd have just came in as Boston dudes, we'd have been cool. Just some out of towners partying. But now we're coming in as artists around a community of starving artists that want to meet Little J. See, the music was so different back then. It was like, we were, this was when the East Coast, West Coast thing was big. So rap a lot, so with RSO, doing business with rap a lot wasn't traditional. See what I'm saying? Meaning that there was no artist, East Coast artists on rap a lot at the time. It was just everybody from Houston, the Scarface, the Ghetto Boys, and that sound, and, 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 and like, See, we're up here in Boston. We sort of follow styles and trends. We in Houston. That's what everybody got them near, damn near sounding like. You know what I'm saying? Is 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 that flavor? So when we came in, nobody really wanted to hear that shit. You know what I'm saying? Even though we think it's good music, but they to- they're immune to certain beat drives and tones and certain conversation. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. That that they want to hear. And on top of that, being not understanding the business in their mind, they're like, how the hell is Little Jay signing? A group like RSO. Where does that, that makes no sense to them. But they don't understand the business of the source and the relationship Little J and Ray was having to conduct business, which got them on the label. They didn't understand. And all they was wondering is, where are these niggas from, man? Who is these dudes? Why they dress? Everybody in the club with white t-shirts and jeans. We got polos on and we're looking like kind of uppity. We're just regular dress. But when you come into a slum club like that, these dudes ain't worried about gear and you know what I'm saying? So we pulling up in a limousine. Imagine right now, right? Here, here you go. Imagine us pulling up at the Rose Club in a limousine. Mm-hmm. I know exactly. Imagine if some dudes, yeah. some dudes from Providence. So, so, so tell, paint the story. So after you get in there, y'all, so y'all didn't get perform. We didn't perform. No, no, no nothing, huh? No, y'all don't nobody, want to take huh? me away from the city. I don't want to take me away from, from the action, please. You know, All I don't right. want to be like Ms. Bullshit because. I will say this in my defense because I've always been shy about my music. I just broke out of that shell probably 10 years ago. Mm. But performing was something that I always... I just rather rap if you like it, you like it. So when the initial conversation started about performing, I said, nah, I'm straight. But dudes was like, yeah, dudes who were really more comfortable with performing, who felt more confident about their songs, was like, I'm with it, I'm with it. I said no. Mm -hmm. But then I'm here. So I'm expecting, let me just say, I'm expected to perform as well. Mm-hmm. Now, their VIP was like, say this, this is VIP. To me, we're right here with just a rope right here. Not like you go upstairs and you're upstairs in the VIP away from the club you looking down. You through. Off. You're just roped off. Mm-hmm. So everybody's walking by us. Just That's the VIP walking by us in the rope. And then the stairs was just like, you know, you can hear them like, I don't need a nigga, man. Who the fuck, man? What the fuck? What the fuck? Lonnie Max, like, yo, I got 
Rapper Lord RSO, man, you know, why is God's performing tonight? Now, we're not known. You can't be going out with Nigga City without some. You, I mean, if you're an artist like, say, Mason, somebody could have came through you, so they got a hit record. You know what I'm saying? They proven, they got sing alongs. Nobody really wants to hear us for the night. And don't forget, this is an amazing establishment. It's a hole in the wall. Dudes is drinking and thugging the way we thugging. So it's like, nobody wants to hear. So we could tell by what people were saying. And they got bad to where we talking to girls and they ain't talking because they're more or less like, I ain't getting caught talking to these niggas. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the dudes over here already saying bad stuff. I'm not going to be the one over here still talking to them. So now it's like, yo, the vibe ain't here. Let's get out of here. You know, because soon as we get on the mic, we get booed the fuck up. We getting out of here. Nah, you know, like I told you, if you know my man, Jay Jinx is aggressive, period. He feeling a way too, because at the time he was like the road manager. He's, you know, he's the biggest one of all of us, plus he's just aggressive. Mm -hmm. So he's like, okay, we, we out, man. We're going, we, you know, all right, we see how you played it. Lonnie gets on the mic freestyling. He's not even a rapper. He's just like, I'm going to do this and I can rap and y'all can't, because this is freestyling is like fluent through Houston. Dude, mm -hmm. anything to get it's on. It's a showcase. It's a showcase. Exactly. So now we leaving. Man, the whole motherfucking club, bro. This is how many people were, I could say, full on it, but just totally it, just not feeling our vibe of pulling up in a limousine. Surrounded. Surrounded. It. What's happening, man? Jenks said a few words to Lonnie that Lonnie didn't like. Now that laughy person, jokey person that we thought we met, everyone got two sides to him. Now he's aggressive. Now he's feeling the way. You see what I'm saying? He didn't have one or two drinks. So now they have us some dialogue. Jenks, people in the car, People in the car, I'm in the car. But now, like I turned the boy, I got to step out. I got to get out. Even though in my mind, I'm like, nigga, get in the limo so we can just get the fuck up out of here. But he still got to say his piece and say his words now. That's just Jinx. So I'm like, I can't let us pull off without dog being in the car. I know I'm going to feel like shit all day. So, oh, man, I opened the door, step out, stood next to him. There go this nigga with the pistol. I'll explain this shit later to Jay. Really talk about like shooting niggas, man. Over, over, over what seemed to be nothing. But I can't be, I can't be surprised about it because shit didn't happen over nothing. This eyes is when liquor popping. It got to the point where the limo driver was like, "Man, I'm telling you, man, I was about to run people over." He got scared. He was like, "I was about to run people over to get the fuck up out of here." So it was a learning experience, man. You know, we went out of town places and had good experiences. You know, but when you in the slums. When dudes is trying to get their shot, that was more or less like, they're not even giving us a chance, man. They're just like, this is alien to us right now. They don't even understand how the hell we all rap a lot right now. Later, we don't want to hear that shit. We don't want to hear none of that. They consider this East Coast there, even though Houston's on East Coast. That's East Coast music. We don't want to hear none of that. They want to hear us face and, 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 you know, slang that they talk and all of that, so... It was a learning experience, though. So, so at this time, Zeno was really, you know, is putting you on. We got back doing? and Z fell out. Z, Z, we got back to the hotel. Zeno listened to the story and couldn't stop fucking laughing, man. He, uh, we're safe now. Yeah, but, but he had a, he was in crash. But man. at this time, he's really putting, the, he's putting his weight behind your music. He's yeah, all about it. Now, he now he went from you being a young man and him not really yeah. paying you attention to. Full fledged support, anything oh, Mike yeah. needs. Anything we all need. Yeah, he, I mean, it wasn't just anything that I need per but, se, anything for his project. Yeah, but but you as an artist, he was in full support of you. Yeah, yeah. Me and the rest of the group. Right. Because, you know, I mean, there was a there was a even benefit. even after I wanna say you mentioned a time, well, this is I wanna say this is this is what I really I kinda heard the story, but to hear you really tell the story, he says, "Okay, everybody sign their contracts." No, this wasn't till, this wasn't then yet. Yeah, yeah, this wasn't then yet. But when we get to that point, that's when it got really real. Yeah. Everybody, nobody wanted to sign their contract, yeah. but you. Everybody said, "Let me bring it home and let my lawyer look at it." You said, "I'm gonna yeah. sign right here, right now." I, I believe in you, Z. Yeah, see, you know, see, let me, let me, let me, um, let me say on that because I knew that anything that was in that paper that wasn't right. And it's probably because Z was with us. See what I'm saying? Z was hanging with Corbin. He was with my... It was like, it's one thing that we all are being in the studio recording, right? We all we all working. But once work is over, everybody's going back to their hoods. We all going down to France. We all going to the Bricks. We all going to the Bronx. 
So even though he ain't directly from Corbin, he was hanging with us. So I would have the business relationship with him. Then I would go, He would, after we hung out clubbing, you know how we ran. Mm-hmm. So I didn't worry about getting beat. And, you know, not to downplay anybody, financially I wasn't too worried about it. This is why I brought it back to even tell you I should have been focused on creating my own empire. In my mind, I'm good regardless to what that paper say. I got a couple of bricks. I don't care what they, whatever they say, let's sign that shit and go. Because at the end of the day, you're going to give me a little check. I'm going to add it to a big stash and I'm going to keep pushing, you see? But if there was something that wasn't right, I was that close to them that I knew I could get it fixed, whereas though they knew they needed it fixed right now. I, I'll tell you another story. I, this is when I knew you and Z were close. And, um, I don't know how far I can go with this story, but I'm going to tell this story. You know, um, the night Paul Pierce got stabbed. Mm-hmm. You can so, tell me this real. So the night, the night Paul Pierce got stabbed, I don't know if I want to tell it on my behalf. <laughs> you know that my name, you know. So I, I'm gonna keep it funky. So the night back then, you know, I used to come across some bomb ass weed. I'm gonna be keep it 100. I used to come across some bomb ass weed back then. Zeno, Zeno love bomb weed. Mm-hmm. Boom. So before the night in the club, he come, yo, what up, Alby? Where that bomb weed at? All right, catch up, whatever. And I see him in front of the club that night. We smoke a couple of buzz. I actually see him in the back then. There was a parking lot right next to that club. It was upstairs, but it was actually, it's not a parking lot, it might be a building now, but you could actually park before you went in the club. This, this is the night Paul Pierce got stabbed. Mm-hmm. You go up the stairs. So I pull up, he's already in this parking lot. This is where Phillies is out. Crack of Philly, we smoke one or two. Boom, all right, see you later. We, we, Zeno and I, our fathers had a mutual relationship mm-hmm. as kids. So as a kid, you know, I knew him, and he has a cousin named Chris. I knew them as kids. They just were, they were older than me, and I was like, all right. You know, so I just knew them as kids. So, um, they was always like, hey, what's up? So, we was like, hey, all right, little dude, he, he looked out. So, we get in there, whatever. Next thing I know, all mayhem breaks out in the club, you know. And, um, it just goes crazy. This is wise guys at the top of the charts right now. They, they, they all over the city. They, they all making noises. I, I want to say, at this time, y'all pulling up to Malcolm X Park and tour buses, jumping now. Y'all got little... Tigers going, motherfucking wise guys, wise guys. Y'all doing all types of shit. Rari's running up and down the city. Y'all switching cars. Y'all y'all got the city on smash right now. You know, y'all win y'all section. All mayhem breaks out. Boom. Whatever. Get up out the club. Zeno calls me. Yo, where that bomb weed at? As soon as he comes up, he pulls up. You know, so now, you know, the films are kind of ringing. Yo, I think somebody got stabbed. They say it's a Celtics player. You know, nobody knows really know. Pulls up, he looks at me, he shakes his head, he just shakes his head like that. He don't say much, he just shakes his head. But the passenger is you. Yeah? Yes. That same night? That same night. Wow. Wow, see? I don't remember that. See, so that, and so that's at that moment, that's how I was like, oh, they fuck you around. You know what's crazy? Because they fuck around. They cool as a motherfucker. That's who gave me a ride. They you gave know, me a motherfucker. That's, that's, that's how I know. So then he was like, I'm like, damn, what's. So he doesn't say much. Yeah, Next but day, hold press on. Let me, hold on. You, you, you contribute want to contribute that? I, I, I ain't contributing was, that no, to no, no, that. No. I'm just contributing that to how no, close no, I get you, was. but no, yeah. that ride didn't happen like that. Let me tell you, see, it you, looked like close. that. Like the closeness, that nigga was like, you know, no disrespect, but he know. That nigga was like, what the fuck, you want to get in here? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When we left the club, it was like, in here? Like, yo, nigga, the motherfucking car's tight in the back, nigga. Ain't you? And he was ready to pull out. He was off. He was parked across the street. And I just happened to see him getting in his car, pulling out. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting here, you know, my clothes is fucked up, you know, from whatever happened. You know, my shit's all fucked up. So I'm like, yo, yo, nigga, we can't get the car out the back. I need a ride. That nigga face was like, damn, bro. Damn, bro. Come on, my nigga. He gonna tell me no because I'm, I'm stuck out this motherfucker. He gonna tell me no. That's That was my nigga. Make no mistake. But that night, that ride was like, oh, get in, nigga. Where you going? Let me get the fuck up out of here. You know he had to get that bum ass weed. <laughs> he made sure he stopped for that shit that night. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, but that's my yeah, nigga. So. That was my nigga back then. We was a lot closer back then than we are, you know? So... 
I guess, so now I want to go on to that relationship because I guess, have you all spoken? Me and Z haven't spoken. Me and Z, what's up, what's up, man? You know, just, hey, what up, what up, what up? That's it. Since probably the last motherfucking, um, I say probably, I'm not going to say 10, 10 be too much. I'm going to say at least, yeah, because I did three, I had drinking seven. So probably the last year, 10 years, me and Z, just what's up, what's up, we'll see each other. Mm-hmm. Okay, because what, at what point did you all have y'all's falling out? What was it that, that you know? I would never call it a falling out. It's just that it's, you know what it is? It's some weird shit that I, we, we, me and Z has never sat down and had an argument. I guess I say that because of the music. I seen a video where the, the just the, you were just so angry towards him. So I was like, damn, what happened? See, a lot of people miss, if you really sit and listen to the lyrics of that song, like, you hear all the music that's going on, people dissing each other, going back and forth with the little shit. That's not one of those records. Um, it's a story. It's a story. It's a story. It's a story. But in the, so so I say it's a story because on on the on the record it sounds like you're singing like yeah, there's like this sounds like there's something there. But in the book, what it is, I just see you know this was a gentleman who was who was trying to help you get on with your music. So I don't see the. I'm trying to see what was it that made that 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 song come out and be like, man, this dude ain't doing what he's supposed to do, you know? See, it was see, like, okay, so with this with the book, I tell the story of the things that we were supposed to do. Like for instance, for instance, when the, when when wise guys when when we had the situation where no one signed the deal, there were phone conversations where. There were arguments over the phone with him. Like, when I explained to you how when it's time to choose a side, you choose a side. Like, everything else goes out the window. At this mm-hmm. time, I was pretty, had a pretty good, decent relationship with the wise guys. You know, at that time. But now, Ray, who was considerably running with my crew, has an issue. I'm no more an artist now. Now we ride it. I was the one with him that day. You know what I'm saying? It was mm-hmm. me, him, and his father. Mm-hmm. When we, we, me and his father, in front of he's like, okay, he called me. Bro, well, let's chop it up, man. Let's talk, man. Do, do, do. These dudes is acting a certain way. Maybe X, Y, Z might not go down. My first reply was like, all right, how we moving? Let's move then. Because it became no more about the music, the money, and the contract. It became about the disrespectful and the threats or whatever they was mm-hmm. going through on the phone. So my first reaction was that was what we doing. I'm with you on whatever you want to do. You see what I'm saying? So at that moment, even after he made an, made an idea of, okay, he calmed down. It was like, okay, I'm no longer chasing dudes, X, Y, Z, do, do, them, do whatever. We had made some plans. Not that he's obligated to owe me. He's a grown man. I'm a grown man. I've said that I'm going to do shit that I haven't done before, too. So not that I was just entirely holding him to his word. But yeah, feeling that you want me and you rock like this. This is this man a lot of people don't even know is my son, my oldest son's godfather. You see what I'm saying? So so we had a different type of relationship. One that even my dudes called weird. It was like, we don't see each other for three days. We're melt, we're dicks. We get each other, have a hell of a time. They can't be around each other two days straight. We're melt. Three days later, we asked for each other. It was a weird type of relationship. And I felt as though just at the time with him coming into the crew like that. Cause see my whole mindset as an artist was, yo, we don't need nobody else. We don't need nobody else. Give me the paper, give me a check. Let me start rapping. You know what I'm saying? We don't need no, you gotta think. This is one of your homies who got a million dollar situation at the time. You're like, what we sharing it for? My mind state was on, fuck the fuck this town. Fuck all the other niggas. What we need that for? We up, let's be up on these niggas. You see what I'm saying? That's just my mindset, I was young. It's like, fuck sharing when you're going to get other hoods, man. Fuck, we don't need no other hoods, nigga. We up. You up, nigga. Put me up. I'm putting niggas up. This COVID. Nigga, we don't need shit else. Let's get to this back. Mm-hmm. So once he came with the ideas of doing this, the wise guys and all this shit and all this shit, I felt like the shit that we had talked about started taking the back seat. And then there was also that small feeling I had, like, because when not only did my, I, my, my, not only did my, Dreams take a backseat in the things we talked about. Once Terra had dropped Double Header, which was the hottest joint on the album, the lead joint on the album, I'm young, 
I'm also feeling a way about that. Not only am I taking the back seat because of the business now, musically I'm taking the back seat because he's hotter than his song is hotter than my song. So now I took the back seat here, but now the music is for making me take the back seat because this is a hot track. This is a lead track. This is a, a song that could probably carry an album as to where my records were so personal about me. It, it, it couldn't carry a whole album because they were basically about manhood and, and my life where he made a universal song. So, yeah, I'm like anybody else. I'm feeling away. I'm like, damn, I didn't took two back seats. Musically, I took one because this man just came with a fire-ass fucking song that's taking over the town. Did, so you never had the thought process of let me go in the studio and make something better? It was there, but see, see, back then it was like, we were so on go. It was like, this is, and, and make no mistake, it was not that, nah, my mind wasn't set there. It was like, this is what we're using. Once Devil had it dropped, it was like almost a no-brainer that this is what we can go with. Because the song was relevant, it was hot, the production was there. It was a no-brainer that no matter what else we do, this is what we're leading off with as our single. Because it was Boston, it had that feel to it, it was authentic, it, it, it was grimy, they were spitting. So we could have made more songs, which we did. But this is what he had confidently said, I'm going with this as a single. And right do it deserved it because it was, a, it was a hot joint. So no matter what records I did, or no, whoever liked it the records most, the, the, the plan and format was set that we're going to lead off with Double Header. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in my mind, you could damn near call it artist jealous tree. You know what I'm saying? In my mind, I'm like, damn, he got one on. You know what I'm saying? Not only did the plan of me coming out as this, now this man that came, not only did he come, he came with the fire. So my mindset was like, this shit get, this shit get, this shit going, this shit getting out the motherfucker, this shit in the way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This shit in the way right now, man. Okay. But I had to respect it because it was that issue. All right. You know? All right. All right. So... I guess if that's what you feeling at that moment, mm -hmm. you that song is recent though. Double header? No, not not double header. The, the song about the song. Oh, about, oh, the song, so, oh yeah. No so, hard feelings. So like. What so I, yeah. So how did you get to that? I'm trying to see how did you get to that song. If, if I had got, you know what? I had got in my feelings one time. I had started getting in my feelings, man. You know, and it's it's like you know, and nigga don't you know only only a busy eyes get in their feelings, you know. <laughs> you know but I'm a, cancer. Out, I'm a cancer. I'm a cancer. I'm a cancer. Z's a cancer. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? I'm a cancer. Z a cancer. So I had started seeing them coming into town, and we would speak just a high and by thing. And like you said, where did the big problem happen? There was never a problem. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it was just like. Too much of this just dapping this half ass dap. What up, Mel? What up, Diggs? And in my mind, I'm like, why the fuck we can't come? Not, not, there was never nothing to talk about. Like, we need to talk about a problem because there's no problem. But in my mind, I was curious of where the disconnect come. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I don't owe you shit. I don't run around saying you owe me shit. I'm going to talk bad about you. I don't give a fuck. You doing you, I'm doing me. But where is the disconnect? So I'm a man, I'm an artist. It got to the point where I was like, even prior to writing the book, it was like, okay, well, let me go deeper into the relationship on the song now. Okay, so let's go jump back in the book. We're going we're gonna to come back to Zeno, okay. and we'll come back to there, but let's jump back into the book because now you start you you, you, you start drinking. You go to jail. Mm -hmm. you finally, your, your, your run kind of finally starts, winds down, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, you, you kind of end up back in jail. Mm hmm and um, now you're drinking heavily, though. You're home, but you can't get I'm to you, you. You can't get to you. Can't get. It's almost like you chasing that high. You chasing that. I want to be on bricks. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want to be on bricks. Nothing but, was good enough. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not there. But I'm. I'm kind of still mentally. I'm gonna get there tomorrow. I'm gonna get there. I just gotta mm -hmm. bust this one move. I gotta get there. So you kind of like you just you on that chase. But you you really intoxicating yourself. So you. You just more, it sounds like the, the alcohol is like just doing way more. It got more. to a point where for me, I, nothing was good enough. You see what I'm saying? It's like, even when I was down to like seven, 8,000, a young boy would take seven, this is the mind state I was in. An average person would take 7,000 and say, I'm going to turn this into 100,000. In my mind, 
seven thousand wasn't enough to do nothing. You see what I'm saying? Because what that gonna lead me to do in the streets was break some shit down into fifties and eight balls. I had surpassed that game so far that it was like fuck that. I don't even want to talk to I, I you know, and, and I'm fucked up mentally because I'm like, you know, my head was big at one time. I will admit. I don't even want to have to embarrass myself to ask nobody who's buying eight ball. Do you, I, I, it's funny I don't want to talk to no nigga about a half ounce. It's funny because, in, in, and even in the dope game, right? I feel like you kind of hurt yourself. You stumbled yourself in that, in that game, too. I did. Like, I, I, like there, was, there was two moves that you made that I was just like, damn, why'd he do that? I did. And damn, why'd he do that? The first move was... Damn, why he hit it so hard? He's fucking up his clientele. But he was like, you know, uh, speaking speaking yeah, to you in third person, yeah, though. Yeah, Mike yeah. Mike was like, you know what? Shh, one to two. One well, turn to one to two think, every bro. time. It's bomb. I can hit it like that. Boom. That was the part of the game, though. So I, my nigga, because but, let me show you why. But your competition. But 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 at the time, but at the time, there wasn't much competition. But I'm saying, but now you're saying, damn. Nigga came back and said, it, damn, it wasn't yeah, right. But see, that was a part of the game. This is what I'm telling you. At the time when we was doing that, my nigga, at the time we was doing, I understand what you're saying. But, but, but now, check this out. My goal was never to be constantly just a drug dealer. My goal was to get to the bag. That was my goal. There's been times where I took one, turned it to two, and made 20000 that day. You see what I'm saying? Where, where a nigga say he but because I just moved two of them at one time. See, so that's 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 the more finesse and the more pimp in the game. But yeah. now there's no repeated customer. It you lost them. I'm it saying like on, like as, as, no. as the time as the time no. went on because you because you, you said leave I'm it saying, out the game. I'm saying no, the game worked. The game. But they when, go the game. Uh huh. That nigga gave me some bullshit because at the time no one knew he was whipping. So okay. all I had to say was, man, what happened? So as you call me back with it. I'm putting it on the next nigga. So when you do call me back, it's gonna be fire now. Yeah, but then, but then you got to the point. I'm saying, but you got to a point where you kind of knew. That's what I'm saying. Because you, you said oh, it. Yeah, you say it in the book. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying you got to the point where you was like, yo, I know this is some bullshit, but I gotta. That's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Not early in the game because you early in the game you talk about your drugs as being a one. No, because those. So, were, so you because could, that that small quantity that I had when I did that, I didn't have a clientele for that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a clientele for that. Like the age bracket of dudes that were doing eight balls and quarters, I didn't even know them. The game had flipped on me so fast that the dudes I was getting money with, I supposed to elevate it with. Now that now we're now I'm pulling up on dudes like yo, what's popping? They're like, I'm like asking them about shit that we used to do, and they're telling me, ah, nigga, I'm on such and such now. But I'm the only one on standstill. The game's still moving around. Mm -hmm. I'm on stuck now. Now these dudes is doing. Better than me. So so doing what I was getting. And not only that, now you got Jeezy and Gucci talking this shit. Now they learning the game. Coming back to me like, man, you been doing that. Other Miz, how long you been doing that shit to me, man? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what you mean? He's like, Miz, you've been whipping that shit. Because it even has a certain texture and look when you do it that way. So dudes knew now that they know, it's like, damn, Miz, you've been killing us with this shit for years, my nigga. So, so Back to that, but what you did do, it was like there was, was one more thing. Like just this is just as a businessman. So I'm looking mm -hmm. at that businessman because you speak, you spoke about it. He was like, man, at this time I just did, I just had to get up. And then you, you your guy, and this was like your, one of your major spots. This was your block. It seemed like this is the block you was in hot. So so at the time in your book, like you was moving, you was you was moving. So but you got you got a block that is constantly. Rotating every 24 hours. That bad mm -hmm. boy pumping out work, pumping out work. Mm -hmm. Your man, the, 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 the kid who's running the block, he's ready to refinance his house, pull the money out, and buy some weight. Mm -hmm. he did but that. he wants the recipe. He did that. Yeah, but you gave him the recipe. You gave it to him. I, 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 I could never understood that because he was, like, you, you I, could, I was like, damn, why would he do that? Because it's like everyone was aware of the recipe at the time. You know, I gave the recipe to several dudes out here. That's just 100. I, I gave the recipe to several dudes because it was like it started being heard about. You know what I'm saying? And and you're talking about Mike. That's you're talking about Mike. Mm. So, so 
it was his time for one. For two, he was like, we had built a close relationship, you know. He was actually my girl's cousin. Mm -hmm. So it was like... At that moment, you just wanted to put him on and you were just comfortable with... with you know, I guess you was... I, I, I kind of wanted... Did you not, know you was going to lose the real estate? Nah, did I you have an intention? Like, because that nah, was your block. Did You, nah, you didn't see that, further enough. Like, once yeah, I gave him the, the I game, knew, I knew. like, not only am I going to lose, that, but he I'm going to lose the real he estate. Had, when he came to me and asked me the game, he had more money than me legally from a refinance move. So I knew, but I had too much almost pride not to say nah. You see, and I almost figured like, okay, if I'm gonna give him the game, what I'm gonna do is switch my game. Now I'm gonna go find the power and get it, still make a dollar off. Because if I don't give him the game, he's going to get it. It's a few dudes out here now that know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, it was almost like I felt like I didn't owe him nothing, but why not now? Why not? And 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 the interesting part about that is. All of that stuff that you say when you did the craziest shit, it always came back to help you. Because even his his situation, because he got to a point where now you're drinking. Like you said, he's all the way up and oh. you ain't up. But he's like, yo, I can't really deal with Mike right mm -hmm. now. Not only is he saying this, is that his phone is tapped him saying this, correct? Yeah, yeah that's what I read saying. this in the book. That's what's saying. Phone, exactly. He said his phone... Yo, I can't, I can't deal with Mike right now. Da, 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 that's da. my code. You I know said, about what wow. happened on Greenwood? Yeah, yeah so, so, yeah. so, so, so that saying. That saved me. Saved me. That saved me. Because at this time now, he don't even want to deal with you. No, it saved me so deep that. They couldn't, they couldn't even touch it. It saved me so deep that fuck just assuming, even with everything that occurred. Like, his family, my kid's mother. His cousin. So I'm going to go with her. She's looking out for her family to go figure it out. I go with her. I'm at the law office. My post like, look at this. That's you. I'm like, oh, shit. You were one of the main targets. Only reason that you got saved, Mike. See, my presence probably even brought the heat because the fans didn't know I was drinking and I was totally off. That became a shock to them. They used to hearing my name was about getting money. Mm -hmm. So now with me hanging around this, ran around the spot getting money, it made them look like, okay, if Mike's here, then this spot's about money. The activity we thought is official is official because McNeil's here. So once they start listening in, like, oh shit, this nigga ain't getting no money. This nigga's an alcoholic brother. This nigga's off his feet. He's not in control of this situation. So now all the time I'm asking, I'm trying to get hit. He's on the phone saying to people, nah, this nigga needs to stop hanging over here. This nigga's over here drinking and shit with my cousin. You know what I'm saying? These niggas over here getting drunk all day, man. This shit fucking, these niggas got spot hot, man. These niggas just drinking. But I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get hit to get back right because it's, 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 it's even over what I was doing at the time going on now. We're talking about fuck hundreds of thousands. Now we're talking about million dollars. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about fuck four or five bricks. We're talking 15, 20 bricks. You see what I'm saying? And he went to prison for it, so we can speak on that. Coming home soon. Shout out to Miz. But 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 like I said, like, I'm feeling the though I'm old because I gave you the recipe and I held you down before you got that honey bands to move to your next level. And that that never came back full speed to me. You see what I'm saying? He threw me a bone ahead there. I will say that. But those bones he threw me was close rental. I'm not, if you give me a six dudes that's worth fucking two, twenty two hundred, I'm drinking and fucking that up. At the time, I'm an alcoholic too. So my mind state really wasn't on, I'm about to rebuild. If it ain't a big one that I can make moves, but even no matter at that time, to be honest, no matter what I had, I was so deep into the liquor that until I decided to get right, nothing was going to change. Mm. So I don't care if it was a little bit or a lot. Until I decided my mind state and said I could start over and fix me first, Nothing was going to change. But I just felt as though I never got the retribution from the things that I did. You see what I'm saying? And it, like you said, it saved my life because he would tell homies, tell niggas, yo, man, yeah, man's over here asking. I was asking. But they heard him saying, nah, we're not throwing him nothing. This is in paperwork that I read because one of my partners on the case never been arrested. He ended up coming home on, on a bracelet. Mm -hmm. It was the first arrest of him. Good kid. So with that being said, he had the paperwork and it says, yo, the wire taps are like, here he is, like, you know, nah, Miz ain't getting nothing. He don't, I wish he'll stop asking. 
damn, I, I got over here today, 8.30 this morning, him and Duck over here drinking, man. This shit getting crazy, you see what I'm saying? And those are the things that saved my life because they couldn't connect me to a conspiracy with the nigga they said was the dude saying he giving me nothing. That saved my life. Interesting, interesting. Wow. Did, um, now what you drinking and you like becoming more like your dad. Yeah, exactly. Did you? Well, you know what? I was worse than my dad because my dad was probably boisterous and probably, you know, boisterous with my mother when he drank, but I became aggressive, you know what I'm saying? I became like something else when I drank. I, I became like dangerous, you know? Because my self-esteem was so so low that it was just like I didn't even give a fuck, you know what I'm saying? I always was down for the action, but the drinking intensified it. It was just like, I don't give a fuck, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. I ain't doing shit else. I don't give a fuck. And a lot of it was like, man, I still want my name ringing. I ain't ringing for no money. I damn motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And the liquor just intensified that. And that's the type of relationship, man. That shit, that shit burnt so many bridges, man. With like even my closest friends, like over the last seven years, I've rebuilt the bridges. You know, and, and it's not that they didn't love me. Who wants to be around that, though? You know, to know when McNeil get here, the whole mood's about to change. Because I go through it now when we not drinking. I know there's some dudes pop up. I'm like, man, I'm not even in the mood for that shit. Not even, some don't even fucking drink. It's the energy they're going to bring to the table. You know, you just be like, I'm not in the mood with that. And it was a 10 out of 10 shot that if we sit here drinking, what are the odds of McNeil casually drinking and having a good time tonight? There's none. And if you don't get in an argument with shitty drunk, somebody got to bring him home or, or be stuck with him because he's going home arguing. It's going to be some type of situation. Rather, if it's not an argument, a fight, or some threats thrown, just something other than just having a nice time going home. And I started having that stigma with me with through drinking. You know what I'm saying? So I can't really call it Bridges Burn. It's just as grown men, nobody really wants to deal with it. It's not that they didn't love me, it's just who, who the fuck wants to deal with that? Because we're all we're all grown ass men. You know what I'm saying? You wanna have a nice time, everybody go home. That was never the case when I'm drinking with you, you know? So did do you think is that was really what once you kicked that like what 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 point did you because you talk about like right around right, 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 you you talk about like um I want to say you you like, yo, I don't like the person I'm becoming. I don't like the man I'm I am. So no, I, I, I thought that I was, got stole. So you got I got punched in the mouth. Okay. That wasn't till well, well, let me make it clear. Uh, let me see. No, because right after I got stole, I had said something slick to her. You know my boy Lloyd. I don't know if you know that dude. I said something slick to Lloyd and shit, probably like three times in a row and shit. And first two times, I guess he just let it fall off, fall off. And he said something with his daughter. And I was aggressive, like, nah, maybe you're a motherfucking ride, man. You know, and this ain't no bitch nigga. You know what I'm saying? He, he fucking hood. So he stole me, fucked me up, dazzled me. So the next morning, we were supposed to get up and, and shoot the film. Okay, now, yeah, I remember the book now. I remember yeah. the story, yeah. So now, in my mind, though, right? So he had to take it. You wanted to ride. You had been drinking, yeah, had been and drinking you wanted to ride. He had something to do with, with his daughter. daughter. And you and were like, what like, the fuck? Oh, you oh, disrespected yeah, him. Yeah. And he just takes took off. Direct, man. boom. All right. And now so, the next day, he said, fuck it, we're going to shoot a film. No, one. My man Seawood called, was like, yo, man, because, you know, that could have went fast to, to the pistols. You know, that was mm -hmm. my first mindset, and I'm sure that was his, and the fact of making that, I'm going to go there. So when our OG Seawood got together and called me first thing, like, yo, man, y'all dudes need to, y'all depend on, because, like, if you know the story, me and Lloyd was good friends, you know what I'm saying? We was getting money together. Mm -hmm. I bought his demon from him. Mm -hmm. We was, like, freaking fracking on the money at one time. So... With that being said, Wood was like, yo, man, y'all niggas came too long. You know what I'm saying? Before y'all get to get into that shit like that, y'all need to just go ahead and shoot the hands to really do something go on like that and y'all don't get down the squad, get some resolvement of it. So Wood in his mind was like, at least he gonna want to throw the hands. But at that moment, I had said to myself, now I have been running around here threatening every motherfucking body from every fucking city pulling guns out, man, shooting motherfuckers. I just been threatening, just say real vulgar and threatening motherfuckers for probably like seven years straight drinking and just wild and doing dumb shit, right? But with that being said, I'm talking about the dudes who really don't 
allow that type of shit. So it ain't that they were scared. A lot of people had just said, you know what, Mike's drunk, man. Some dangerous dudes. Even some dangerous dudes, you know, it happened a lot on my team because my dudes would be like, man, dudes who I know are equally as dangerous as me used to just be like, go ahead, man. Miz is drunk. But then it started happening with dudes from other neighborhoods who I knew would, would, would leave you somewhere. But they was giving me that pass to be like, man, that's McNeil. He's drunk. That's McNeil. If I wasn't McNeil being drunk doing the shit that I did, I'd probably be that killed. You know what I'm saying? And that's because a lot of times I would have a pistol. A lot of times I would threaten to go get the pistol, not having it. And they probably had a pistol. So a lot of times I got a pass because the dudes knew my character prior to drinking. You know what I'm saying? And, and I had become identified as that nigga drunk. No one thought I would bounce back like this. It was like, man, it's drunk. He's like, oh, that nigga didn't turn to us all. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of the shit I was talking, a lot of dudes did get passes. But now at this point, a lot of it don't make no mistakes came for the fact that someone was like, I don't want to deal with this nigga shit tomorrow. I, I, I fucked this nigga up without killing him. Next week at Packers, he's going to be in his parking lot waiting for me to come the fuck out and then it's going to be a shootout or, or whatever we're going to take place. So, but once somebody finally put their hands on me, then that's when I reflected. I said to myself, like, okay, I done ran this long. This finally really happened. And it's a blessing that it was somebody that I can get close enough to that with wood to be able to be like, if there was no mediator, I wouldn't have had that moment to really reflect on my life. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and I had a daughter at the time. My daughter was probably like five. Just coming in the house, seeing her with all this shit going around, my mind just, it just clicked to me that day. It was like, yo, what? You got to fix some shit. You know what I'm saying? And when I say the punch was big for me, because that's what made me say, yo, hold on. A motherfucker put their hands on me. I didn't install fear in so many motherfuckers in this town over the years, man. Now motherfucker went out of the way to put his hand on me. So now my mind is like, in order to reinstate that, an alcoholic mind is like, I must do something violent to reinstate the fear or I take a loss. But then the maturity kicked in and said, I'm going to need you to understand for it and say, man, it's time to rebuild. Okay, fuck everything else. Nothing else matters now besides me looking in the mirror and say, when do I cut the tail of the dragon? When do I say I can't keep waking up, drinking, arguing, drinking, being nothing? Because the world's going around. All my dudes, are, the source is all my dudes are working jobs now. Everyone's elevated. Everyone's taking their life to another level on finding what they want to do pre-source life and making moves. I'm the only one not. See what I'm saying? I'm the only one not. I'm the only one. Dudes are picking me up after work to drink, dropping me off to go to work. They'll pick me up to drink, drop me off when they go to work, or pick me up after they get off work. I'm just there. I'm just sitting. But that was the day that I made the decision to be like, you know what? It's time to dry out. I know no matter what it is I decide to do, I can't do it drinking. I can't do it drinking. I know that. So after that, I stayed in the crib for about a week straight. A week straight fighting that. And like when I say fighting that, dudes don't understand that. So it's just him wanting to have a, a field one. No, just stealing it. Because when we got it. there, when we got to, when he came to the crib, when they came to the crib, he told me to punch him back. Oh, that's He didn't even want to fight. Right, yes, yes, yes. He was like, I'm not going to fight you, man. Uh, He's like, my nigga, you forced my hand. He's like, my nigga, you forced my hand. I just told you my dog, but I don't want to fight. Steal me so we can be finished with this shit. Yeah. He's telling my camera, I got one camera right down. He's telling my other camera about to die. But this, this, the conversation is so good. Yeah, I was just yeah, like, just yeah. keep going, man. So I, I, want, I don't want you to wrap it up. I don't want to lose none of it so they can yeah, see what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Wow, man. Yeah, so it was like, it was like, okay, me getting a steal back is not going to fix nothing. For pride? Nah, you just tried, you just gave me the steal. So that's nothing. Fuck that. I got to get right now. I gotta fix myself. No money or nothing. It's just got to start with stop drinking. Nothing is going. I can't. I can't be on my feet. I'm not a functioning alcoholic. I'm not somebody that can still make moves and drink. You know, like everybody. I got dudes who can drink all day, go to work, do nine to five, come home, and, and still. I got dudes that can drink all day. You won't even know they was drunk because they know how to control their liquor. It's just not me because it's in me through my dad. See what I'm saying? So I knew I had to stop in order to fix it. So I want one more story before we go. Yeah. Now at this time, I want to say you were drinking, mm -hmm. and this is the this is the last one I just don't get because there was some things in the book I was like, yo, when I see Mike, I gotta ask him about this shit right here. So now you got a couple of dollars to go cop. 
and you've been drinking, you ain't really want honey. You go to New York. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you want Spanish Harlem. I don't know if you're uptown. I don't mm -hmm. know where you are, but it sounds, you know, mm -hmm. you, you you walk on the block and you, you know you 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 come across some dude like okay. I'm looking for. I, I know what you're talking and, about. And um, basically, they, you don't really you don't know them, mm -hmm. but they like I got it. Go to the car, get the money, come back. Because my man Duron gave me a name, and all this was just from looking for. This is how dumbfounded I am. I'm looking for a name. I'm looking for a name. You just pull up on a random block in New York with a name. I went with Duval. I was I'm pretty familiar with the face, but the name when Duval took me there, this was the guy. This this you know, I, I wasn't thinking of how New York hustles, places change, like, you know what I'm saying? Santos is here today. I'm thinking, okay, I know where to go. My man's my man's locked up now. Dudley locked up. My man's here. I'm just going back to where me and Duval went. To see his man. So, you, so when I said the name, they were familiar with the name because he played this block for so long. But they could identify that. I'm just coming to ask him. I must not have made the call. I must not did everything that comes in detail to get this, make this happen. It was easy, it was the easiest thing. So what happens? I go, me and wife, and she's sitting in the car. I try to make it happen. Long story short, I got two. What did you get taken for? 20 some thousand. And this is you now, and you and you fucked up at the moment. You and really ain't got it to lose. Nah, you, you, so you just try, you try your hardest to come back up. No, the crazy shit about it is, right? The crazy shit about it is that at the time, the dudes was working in New York. You know what I'm saying? Dudes was working at the source, but they was coming home every weekend. You see what I'm saying? Every other weekend, not every weekend. Usually you'll catch Dale and everything. You know, Dale's my dude, but he really wasn't one of the ones I needed to catch who would be able to give me a fire on. You know what I'm saying? And it was like, damn, now I'm calling up the way everybody's like, we're in Boston, we're in Boston, let's go, we home. It's just an L. It's just an L. Even, even just to come back with your pistol would have been satisfying. You never even seen no drugs. Never seen, never seen, never seen nothing. You just... Never seen my money when I gave it to him. Ain't got in the car. That was one of the most embarrassing times of my life. That's why I kept the secret so long. Because... Once I got back in the car with my baby's mother and had to explain to her what just happened, she don't know me for no whole shit. She's used to me being in charge of a situation, especially when I'm in that type of mind state. So to get in the car and just be like, yo, we out? That was the quietest ride of my life back home with nothing. And for one, it was embarrassing. For two, it was just like, damn, here we go again. Back the fuck off feet. Trials and tribulations, man. Uh, nah, a great read. Glad that I read no hard, hard, no hard feelings is a great read. I'm telling you. I mean, it reads like you just hear. We're just touching on some of the stories now. With just some of them, man. It's a movie, man. Like you got another career. You know, you got another career. Hey, man. No hard feelings, out Y'all know how to DM me. IG Mike McNeil. Dot eight Mike. Dot McNeil. Let them know right there, man. Let them know right there, Mike. Mike dot McNeil dot 18 on IG, Mike McNeil on Facebook, DM me, man, for the book, man. I'm pulling up, bringing or shipping them out. No hard feelings, two on the way, and also weighing in part one, man. Look out for me, y'all. All right, all right, all right. So I did want to say before we went, we were supposed to swing back. I ain't going to, because I don't know, I ain't going to let you off. Yeah, so yeah. The, the, the song, have you and Zeno spoke since the song came out? No. No? No, we haven't spoken. He act like it doesn't exist. We haven't even chopped it once, but you know. But see, sometimes let me tell you something. See, like, now I understand that strategy is because when you don't want to bring something to life, you ignore it. You see what I mean? It's like if he the painted, and it was never like I told you, if you really truly listen to the song, there was never no disrespect in the song. I never, I never called him out his name. I never, you know, I never did the B word or the or, or accused him of any type of silly mess or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So his character, I, I didn't come for like climbing. If you really listen to the story, it was a personal about some things we discussed. If anything, the deepest thing that I've said was there was no loyalty in you. And the reason he probably couldn't address that because I believe that as a man, he probably could say to himself like, damn, not that he owe me anything financially, not even, you know I mean? Just like as a friend, like, you know, because the man did more for me, man. I probably, any one man, man, could ever, I could ever say, just in the circle, just 
doing something for someone for no reason, I never could take that away from so, me. So with that being said, how do you write that song? Because if you listen to the song, there's nothing that I, I'm telling you from the perspective of where we was at as friends. Tell me a line. You, you think of the song. You can play it. Think of a line whereby, where other than me saying the fact that he was with the point at the end or there's really, I'm just telling the facts that one thing we can never change in life is the fact of something. You see what I'm saying? You could, you, that's the only thing you can't change in life is the fact of something. And that's all I told. So with that being said, that wouldn't be disrespectful if I tell you the truth. It's like I can shoot a corner and say I never so, told Alex. So, so I'll, 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 let's, let's, let's play a little reverse. Let's, let's reverse this one time before mm -hmm. we go. This guy you put on. Boom. More than boom, boom, boom. But now on his next go around, he wants to make a song. And whether true, fake, lies, whatever it is, he wants to put this in the song, but it's, it's tarnishing me. I don't believe that that song tarnished. No, nah, it's not tarnished. No, nah. nah, that's not a tarnished song. Right. So at that time, at that how you feel. I hope it. Nah, that's well, not. I'm gonna pull, pull it up. That's a good way to do it. We're gonna play that shit. We're we gonna rock about it here. We got time to play it. We're gonna pull it up right now, and we're gonna double back. Let's double let's, back. Let's pull, pull it up, up now. All right, let's go. Man, for cheddar. Got a winter hip hop pop and rock. Never was in the sports, barely went to gym. I beat boxed and rap, swore I was rock him. Flat top and a trench coat, but a smaller chain. But a similar piece, I was doing my thing. My cousin Tony was a dope boy running with the bomb. Love me so much, I was kept me right underneath his arm. I asked to put me on, and then he tell me no. Told me he whooped my ass if I ever touched dope. But I ain't one for nothing. I had gazelles and ballys, plus mess emojis I heard about in them back alleys. Like Big Chuck, that record turn right from my soul. Which was a particular person that I wanted to know. So I can rap for him, showing my head juice. And when my time came, I finally broke. Lose it 80 bars straight without one single mistake. In my mind, it was time to show I had what it take. All he could do was smile when I was finally finished. And by the crowd's reaction, I knew I handled business. Before leaving, I got his number and his address. Excited as fuck to see what's up next. Fuck waiting a couple days. I hit him next morning. So early that I could still hit a nigga yawning. He told me come through, give him a couple hours. Shit, I was there before he could even hit the shower. I was a young nigga. With rap dreams I'm talking way before Wu-Tang even dropped cream Back when Big Chuck and Eve was still the body rock I was hanging around Rage trying to earn me a spot Still chasing a knot At the same time Putting my gang bang and hustling all up in the rhymes I became doper Rap more fluent He never complimented But I knew he knew it What do you do when a man is extending his hand So I kept crying about it And followed his plan My flow was getting hotter Rep getting bigger, the streets was talking about me cause I was shooting niggas Then volume 7 came, I did my first mixtape Spazz so hard that couldn't end nigga hate My name was ringing bells, plus I had clientele Fuck right and got caught with a pistol and did a year in jail Still writing rhymes while I'm walking the yard Hearing whispers from niggas saying I think that I'm hard But I ain't give a fuck cause I can hold my own Only worry I had was getting back to that microphone I call home and heard that rock was nine hours so A feeling went through my body that y'all had never know It was well deserved cause his flow was smooth Had aggression to it, reminded me of Ice Cube I was happy for him but I was sad for me Feeling like he's in the position I'm supposed to be Levin muscle to the bit that it's signed to Tommy Boy, shoot a motherfucker in a minute about to hit the store Call back and salute Rock Shiz, answer the phone And I can instantly hear something was wrong through his tone He said, Miss Rock, I stabbed last night and died I just couldn't believe it I dropped the phone and cried like, why now, Lord? My partner just found his purpose And we ain't blood related So I can't make the circle Ow. Well, I'm home now Time to get back on feet And put these three notebooks full of rhymes I wrote over beats My old cellmate Eddie was out here getting keys He really set me right Really looked out for knees Within about four months I had about 40 thou And a half a chicken and ounces Over to Miko's house I'm in a car riding And finally bump back in the rain But we on different terms Cause he around my way Where I'm respected like a god For going so hard To see Lil Mike calling shots Had to seem odd It was obvious I grew up but by the Versace I was wearing, it was evident that I grew up. 
I see something in his eyes better than that handshake Yeah, the respect was real, but the love was fake The source that came a long way since Dave was a DJ I met him years ago when he first gave me airplay Now we in New York, office at the top At a time when it's hard for white folks in hip-hop So Ray became the face, used it to his advantage Figured he'd get him a group he could produce and manage Fucking some other niggas, what's on my solo project? You hang around with my niggas, I don't understand this logic That's when I realized he had an ulterior motive But it wasn't time to speak on it, so I just kept it noted And put my pride aside, cause I wanted to make it Figured I'd jump in a group and just smile and fake it Waiting on my moment to cut loose like a wild goose I was a gang leader, fuck being in a gang truce My money getting bigger Rep getting larger, people afraid to approach me like I'm the godfather Everything that I was, is what he wanted to be Behind the scenes, that's what silently sparked the jealousy A couple mil, still can change that nigga's heart How could you be envious when I've been this here from start? For fighting that shape fools to riding with the ooze For making front page herald and breaking news I be all confused like, nah, I'm in some wrong This nigga can't dislike me, I know them way too long Can show them nothing but respect and been down for the nigga way before he ever got a sauce trick But now the album done, and yeah it sound crack But now the wise guys won't even sign the contract They wanna argue with ya, they see a bigger picture I think you forgot it was me that was riding with ya In my mind it was like I told ya But I put my thoughts to a side and stood by your side cause I'm a soldier But no good D goes unpunished Even after all of my loyalty you go off and do more dumb shit Start to rap, group the untouchables And don't even ask me to get off in the group like I don't rap no more But still, I ain't had one bad word to say While everyone in my hood was screaming fuck right When you and Paul had issues, I ain't participate Ain't get in one video, then show a piece of hate Cause I appreciate everything you did for me But look how you played Tony Roman, that was your real homie There ain't no loyalty in you, it was all a persona Like when you got with us and said fuck four corners Niggas like Big D, Will Jeff and DJ Black Them is your niggas that would've gave you the shirt off they back But you switched up on them, like you did to us Then re-emerged in the street, running with eight busts Yeah, it was all good, till them indictments came But when they snatched him up, you ain't seen a piece of chain Ooh, I don't know, Mike I don't know, it's a, it's a great story It's a great story um, I think y'all should have a discussion You know what I mean, I think, you know, um I believe one's in. I believe one's in one. You know what I'm saying? That's just how we move. You know. I I believe I believe we. You know, it's nothing to where we couldn't. I had the pleasure of reading the book, so it goes a lot more further in detail in the book than the actual song in the video. Um, go get the book. Go get the book. No hard feelings. Out right now. You know, it's gonna be on Amazon pretty soon. I'm pretty sure Mike is putting the paperwork done, signing the deal. You know, making sure they got all his credit and debit cards right, so the transaction. Is, you know, he want to get the bag, so he's making sure the money comes when it's supposed to come. So that's where he's at with that. But nah, thank you for coming to the cave and the cipher. You know, shouts out to Hip Hop Daily. Shouts out to the Long Way. Shouts out to ASAP Media. You know what up, Diego? What up, Mike? You know what up? Fred, Frank, and what up, uh, the Herb? You know, those are some of the folks that hold us down here, man. So I want to thank y'all and definitely thank you to Mike. Thank you again, brother. Once again for Once sharing, for sharing this story, man. Thank you, man. And um, I can't wait, wait to read the next novel, man. It was well, well written, well written. Yes. Peace. Signing out. Man, K for Cheddar. Cheddar. Got original hip-hop pop rocks.